Yes, hello everyone, welcome to day two at EMLS League Series 2, presented by Coca-Cola. Not too long from now, we will crown the second champion of the season. I am Faisal Kamisa. We've got Susanna Collins, Dan Gaskin, and Mike LaBelle hanging out. What a day one, Dan. Yeah, it really was an incredible day one. I mean, we were talking about how spoiled I was in Series 1, and I didn't know what was going to happen in Series 2. What players was I going to see? Are we going to see a repetitive nature? Well, it's it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Goal Machine was eliminated. Our Series 1 champion does not get through into any further than the quarterfinals. He won't be in the semis. He won't be in the final this time. But, but we did see Paolo Neto qualify through to the semis. That's back-to-back -back semifinals. And he'll be looking to try and make it back-to-back -back grand finals here, which if he plays anything like he did yesterday, he's definitely capable of doing so. Hey, speaking of finals, Michael Bell, when Dulsta makes it there, he usually wins. He's got a bit of a hurdle, though, to get there. It's not a usual win. He only wins. He has not lost a final <laughs> yet, but who's counting? And we had a fantastic <laughs> matchup yesterday. I would argue the best matchup between Dulsta and Kimimito. Both guys battling back and forth, facing adversity. There were comebacks, there was action, there was drama, all of the above. But Susanna, there are a couple players standing in both these players' way, Paolo Neto and Dulce's way, Expert and Lamps, they both want to make a name for themselves a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that we can kind of call day one a little bit of an upset special. Uh, oh, yeah. As we saw, Lamps taking down Goal Machine, who is our League Series 1 champion, and then Ex Verde taking on Alan Avi, who was the number one seed. Ex Verde was number eight, um, and he bounced in. So, I, but again, Let's go, the man. way we're talking about so this, it, it isn't really an upset, Faisal, because all of these guys oh. are so talented. We saw yeah. what Ex Verde could do last season. Yeah. Lamps is a rising star in FIFA. So it, it's, again, once again, just a testament to the level of skill and talent that we have on the EMLS circuit this year. And again, only three points separated first and eighth in the standings to get to this event. So really no upsets anywhere you look. Due to the current COVID-19 conditions, of course, we had to move our first two events online. We really wanted to be in person in Chicago, despite the snow for the event. But of course, ensuring the safety of the player, staff, and fans remaining our highest priority. We are so looking forward, though, to being back in person for EMLS Cup in Austin, Texas at South by Southwest on March 13th. That will be a whole a vibe. What I'm excited about today is the contest we have for you on Twitch. Yes, another one where you can win a custom MLS jersey, MLS store gift cards, and there are 120,000 FIFA points. The equivalent of a thousand US dollars up for grabs. I was pretty active in the giveaway part of the Twitch yesterday, but uh, I fizzled near the end. So congratulations to all of you that did win. Here's how you can win today. Throughout the show, you'll see questions pop up on your screen from the Sport Buff extension. The more you participate, the more correct predictions you make, the more points you're going to earn. And you can play on your desktop and on mobile. At the end of the show, the top 10 on the leaderboard will be eligible for prizing. You have to link your account to be eligible. Restrictions do apply. You have to be 18 or older. Got to live in the U.S. or Canada, excluding Quebec. Please read the rules in the panel below for more details. I was up to, I think, 14. That was the highest I got. Then I was like, you know what? This is unfair. Let the people watching, let our viewers win us some of these prizes. So I stepped away, but I'm not going to hesitate to get back in there if y'all are slacking. Trust me. No slacking on the goals and the sick play yesterday. You saw some of the highlights. Here's a look at the bracket and where things stand after day one. Mike LaBelle, what matchup are you eyeing the most today? I think I know. Oh, I, I'm looking at this Dulsta versus Ex Verde. We're either going to have the return of Dulsta to the finals. We haven't seen him there in a few years. And for Ex Verde, uh, yesterday, and uh, I think we all put out a bit of a public apology outside of you, Faisal, of course. We expected <laughs> Alan to get the job done. He makes the upset. It was in dominant fashion, and we've never seen him reach a final. So I, I like what's shaping up there on the left side of the bracket. Uh, and, and then, of course, we have household names who go in the other direction with Lamps and Palanetta.
Yeah, on the other so side, you've got two players who have played against each other, Faisal, that we saw it in Series 1. We saw Lamps go up against Palanetto. Palanetto beat him 5-2. It was a, a very emphatic victory indeed, but Lamps looks like a different beast this time today. He took down Gold Machine, the reigning champion, and now he's going to be riding that momentum wave. And I'm scared. I would be scared if I was <laughs> going up against either of these players. Actually, I'm scared watching these players, so God knows what yeah. they're feeling right now going up against one another. Uh, I thought you were going to say you'd be scared for your predictions, but all of you should. Oh. We'll get to that a little later mm. in the show mm. as well. All right, all right, all right. It's so bad we have to actually bring in someone else to help predict, but we'll also <laughs> get to that a little bit later too. Let's look at the schedule for today's matches, all right? We've got our first semifinal match featuring Austin FC's X Verde versus Dulsta of the New York Red Bulls. Then our second semifinal is Lamp from Minnesota United, taking on League Series 1 runner-up Paolo Neto from Atlanta United. Then the winners will face off in the EMLS League Series 2 final. Let's take a look at our League Series 2 EMLS power rankings. I imagine some things will change after this event, of course, Dan, but what performances on day one makes you think certain names will move in certain places? Wow, Paolo Neto is going to be inching closer to Goal Machine, if not overtaking Goal Machine. Now Goal Machine has fallen in the quarterfinals. Paolo Neto gets back-to-back -back semifinals. Lamps also justifying perhaps a raise in his stock after his semifinal that he's got to as well. There's a few players that maybe will drop out of this top 10. Uh, George Damu not able to qualify for another tournament, needs to win the qualifier to get to the EMLS Cup. Alexander might drop a little bit, but I'm still impressed with what he's done. And Gustavo, of course, could drop out of that top 10. 10. Difficult to power rank so many good players, of course, uh, but certainly Paolo Neto, his stock is rising so much right now. Yeah, 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 absolutely right. Now that you know some of the players that Dan mentioned, let's talk about the league format for this season. You already know, there are three events. Earlier this month, we had League Series 1, where the top eight qualifiers moved on to a single elimination bracket, $20,000 on the line, and the League Series 1 title. Now, in League Series 2, players compete again. They did the online qualifier matches this week. They were tight, extremely tight. The top eight moved on to the single elimination bracket to compete for $20,000, where we'll crown that one today, and the winner of the League Series 2 title. Then at our third and final stop of the season, EMLS Cup, all online qualifier matches are tallied up. They form an overall table. Top 11 move right into the EMLS Cup bracket. The last 16 players, they battle it out in a last chance qualifier for the 12th seed. Then EMLS Cup, that bracket is a 12 player single elimination bracket with $35,000 up for grabs. Also, the top three finishers, they receive direct seats to the FIFA Global Series playoffs for a chance to then move on to the FIFA Year World Cup and be crowned the undisputed best FIFA player in the world. That's the season format. This is, of course, League Series 2. Here's how you can watch each and every event that comes your way. All broadcasts are on Twitch and on Twitter. If you missed League Series 1, you can go check out the VODs. I cried myself to sleep watching League Series 1 finals yesterday, but that's, that's okay. That's just me. Today is the final day, though, for League Series 2. Then our final event of the season, EMLS Cup, on Sunday, March 13th, South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. You can tune in and, of course, follow at EMLS on Twitter for all your updates. And do not forget to subscribe to the MLS channel on Twitch or use your channel points to unlock our EMLS emotes. And no surprise, of course, the most used emote mic, the labellism. The labellism. We got the picture, we got it on a popsicle stick, and we've got the emote as well. Because of course we do. I'll never get over how good that picture is. Never get over it. It's top quality. I'm just saying. I'm in gonna, a different I'm gonna light, frame it. And I, send I think it you can be an artist. Yeah, I think you can be an you artist. You gotta sign it. it, it you gotta work. sign it, frame right? it, and send I'll it to I'll autograph Mike. it. Exactly. Whatever you want, no problem. Oh, you want her to sign <laughs> it, not me to sign it. Understood. <laughs> my bad. Not my you, bro. It's my <laughs> finest work. <laughs> Maybe I you should send it to the autograph and then you should put it up. It's so good. It's so good. I love my facial structure in that one. It's got I've got a killer jawline there, yeah. All round. <laughs> We're going to see it a lot today. Struck. No We're ears. Gonna, can't hear. We're going to see oh, that a lot. I try. I try. Dan, Dan is just rolling his eyes at this. Right well, now. I mean, like, I think <laughs> a lot of pictures of Mike LaBelle, but I don't know how much of them are appropriate for broadcast, so I'll just keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We do have a separate chat of, like, dodgy Mike. Like, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, Dan. Dan. 
better or worse than ice cream on church? Sorry, sorry, I didn't think we were bringing oh. that up. To, never mind, 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 never mind. He's never trying mind. to reel you into sharing the group chat. I'm seeing what's happening right now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Don't happen. We're get, don't we're fall gonna for take it. a quick break. We are taking a break. <laughs> we need to right now. We need to get on the same page as the four of us. Up next, it's our first semifinal match. X Verde versus Dual Stud. It's EMLS League Series 2 presented by Coca-Cola. What is good, everyone? Welcome back to EMLS League Series 2 presented by Coca-Cola. We've got four players left competing for their share of $20,000 and the League Series 2 title. We're kicking things off with our first semifinal. It's Austin FC's X Verde taking on New York Red Bulls dual star. Dan, set us up. This is going to be a matchup that you do not want to miss. X Verde, who really surprised everyone yesterday. He was very much the underdog, but arguably could be the favorite, depending on how you look at this one. But he's going up against Dulster, someone who hasn't reached a semi-final in a couple of years, but we know full well that when he did reach a semi-final, he went on to the final three times and won it three times. So that is a scary statistic to go up against if you are X Verde. Mike, I know you have a favorite here, but X Verde, he was class yesterday. And uh, not only did he surprise people, but he had a different gameplay style. Remember, we've had a, a fresh update or a new patch in FIFA, which has shifted the way that the gameplay and some of the structure works. And he was using a lot of deep 
ball, and it was a little more of a direct approach. We saw pressure, and I'm interested if he's going to bring that identical type of package for Duelsta, or if he's maybe going to adjust. Well, Mike, let's take a look at the rosters here as well. Take us through X Verde's roster and some of the rules for the tournament regarding them. I'd love to, and if you're just tuning in, welcome. This is the stream that you want to be a part of. EMLS, relatively straightforward. You're going to have five MLS players on the pitch at all times. And from League Series 1 to League Series 2, the big shift is that we now have the option of having Pato. So Pato's made it into almost everyone's team. Whether he's in the starting 11, he's coming off the bench. Uh, and then as for the other players, you're going to see one icon is the traditional route. A lot of R9s, just because R9 is unstoppable, plays with both feet, can finish anywhere and everywhere. And then it gets to mixing and matching between the Mbappes and the Neymar the Ginolas, the Vinicius, and so forth and so on of personal preference. And you're not seeing any Team of the Year players, mainly because we had to submit these teams prior to those releases. So that's the only reason you're not seeing Team of the Year players. That will shift uh, heading into EMLS Cup. So at the next event, first LAN event, the return of everything, Austin, Texas, South by Southwest, something you do not want to miss. I see Dulce's squad relatively similar. He's not going to play Ginola as a fullback. You expect Santos to go take that role. And then Petr Cech in goal, always a little bit of some of that subjectivity. And Dempsey now in his new role coming off the bench, sometimes even a reserve, mainly because of that Pato introduction. All right. Some similarities, a couple differences though in these rosters, which is great to see as well. Every player finding their certain style and certain way of making things work. Hey, that's X Verde. It's his second season competing in EMLS. If you don't know him just yet, well, let's meet him. My name is John Garcia and my game tag is X Verde and I play for Austin FC. I'm 26 years old and I'm from Riverside, California. The meaning behind my gamer tag is just to represent the fans and the club itself. I have been representing the club for two years. My favorite MLS player is Dempsey, just because of what he's done for the national team and uh, his legacy in Europe. My play style is very attacking. I sometimes leave myself open defensively, but whatever it takes to score a goal. Whenever I'm in game, I only listen to music. My role model in gaming would have to be Faker. It's somebody who's achieved longevity for numerous years and achieved it all and still wants more. My first FIFA game was FIFA 10. It's exciting to see South by Southwest hosting. Uh, it's a historic venue that means a lot to Austin and it would be great to win there. My hopes for this year are the same as everybody else, just lift the trophy. Here he does seem to have a good head on his shoulders. And uh, again, he's going to make for a tough bout today and going forward. Okay, guys, it's time. It's time for our pre-match prediction. No. We all get a chance to predict the winner, oh. but we have a oh. special guest joining us who's doing a watch along on his channel as well. Let's bring in Zway. Zway back. What's up, man? How you doing? Hey, doing all right. How's it going, guys? Oh, we are we are doing okay. Listen, <laughs> I don't mean to say this in any bad way. Our predictions are so bad. We needed to bring in somebody that's a little bit smarter than us right now. So without getting into your pick just yet, are you ready to handle the pressure that comes with EMLS predictions? Because there's a lot of it. All right, bring it. Hey, listen, man, I'm, I'm, I'm about the pressure. You know, what's going to set a lot of these competitors apart in the competition is, is dealing with a little bit of pressure. So, uh, hey, br uh, bring it. Yeah. Hey, Mike, by the way, how's it going, brother? <laughs> Good to see you again, man. The hair's looking, uh, the hair's doing... looking good. <laughs> I'm doing wonderful. I'm happy that you're going to come and hopefully save my record here. Uh, I, 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 I think Faisal's uh, the only one above 500 at the moment. So uh, we're looking yeah. rough. It's been a rough it's, couple it's weeks. It's not been good. <laughs> well, let's see, though, if Zway can help uh, get us all back on track as well. All right. Here's a deal in the chat. You can make your prediction by voting in the sport buff extension on the screen. We're going to go around the horn with ours. I will direct you guys. Let's start, though, with you, Mike LaBelle's. Feels like I know where you're going to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just feel that Duelsta has been extremely consistent. He rises to these big occasions, and the man has not lost in a semifinal. Hope this is not going to be a curse of a commentator. He's not lost in a final. <laughs> I expect him to get the it's job done. all you've done, done so far. Uh, I just yeah, want to I'm, let everybody know. <laughs> yeah, like Mike, half of Mike's you're, correct you're not predictions wrong. come from... We, we yeah, brought in exactly. a judge predictor because of my predictions have been so suspect. Yeah, I'm a judge predictor. You Honestly, know like when they bring them in for the celebrity shows? It's like, hey, he's way back. Hey, we got a situation. Mike's really been rough lately. Uh, can you come in and save him? You didn't even say that one with your chest, man. I didn't even feel the belief in that one, but I know where you're going to go I know there what's anyways. happening right, behind the scenes. I see I the know, group chats. I, know, I, I know, see what's I know, happening here. I know. I know. We're like, I know. Hey, we got a last a minute back. guest. Predictions have been kind of dodgy. We need to improve something. 
Yeah, you see the. All you got is labellisms. That's all you got, Mike. That's how you can't show up on time. All right, Susanna, you're up. Your thoughts. I liked that. I like that little sick burn there. Um. Oh. I mean, I have been hot garbage, hot garbage in making predictions. I think I got one right, one yesterday, which is, just, this is abysmal. And uh, this is not reflective <laughs> of my typical performance on EMLS broadcasts. I just want to say I'm usually a little better than this. Need to redeem myself. I'm going to go, um, oh man, I'm going to go dual stuff with this one. Because I, I think okay. I think that was a huge, he Writing wanted it, it so much yesterday after he won, when I spoke to him, he wants more trophies. He is hungry for it. Um, I, I just, I like the way he's playing right now. We're going dual stuff. All right, Dan, you. No, you. No. Me? I'm wow. going to go oh, after you. Oh. Every single I'm time. <laughs> Wait a minute. You've got I direct last. people where to like, talk no. here. <laughs> I no, direct you. people here. What are we doing? Back All right, you know what? Fine. I, I like it. I like bold. it, Dan. The ice cream burn got me here, but I, unlike that, that ice cream, I'm not melting big under beard pressure. energy. My big predictions beard energy. are going with and no, Okay. Uh, I'm going with I'm going with X Verde. I'm going with X Verde. I believed in I him yesterday. Would. I believed in him yesterday. This is a guy that had big moments in League Series 1 and League Series 2 a year ago. Couldn't capitalize on them. He was there. He learned. He was also in my Twitch chat last night hanging out. And so the affection is there. So thanks to that, <laughs> I am picking him. So down. if you hang out you with Basil, that. he will pick you. I'm glad yeah, you well, went listen. That. Yeah, Because please, I wanted then. to go against you. And well, I would have gone so well for you, you so far. Dulster. But it's worked so well for you. The reason you. why I'm going to go for Dulster is yesterday, I think Xverde got a little bit lucky with some of his goals. Still deserves to be here, don't get me wrong, but he got a little bit lucky. He's going up against Dulster, who's Irish. Luck of the Irish, I think, will topple Xverde in this situation. And I'm putting the okay. New York Red Bulls to go through. I like that logic. Mm. The yeah, a lot of wordplay there. I like that. I Good delivery. Says you. Says you, Mike LaBelle. A lot of wordplay. <laughs> Interesting. I respect it. All right, Zway. Yeah. Zway, last but not least, I don't know if your chat's helping you out, Sway, your decision or not, but I feel like you're smart enough to go with the right guy. So who you got? Okay, so 8-3 is a resounding victory. Um, I don't think you can count on a guy that goes uh, <laughs> that goes 8-3 across two games. Uh, and three people have already said Dulsta, so I feel like I just got to jump in there. Me and Faisal, Team Faisal, Team Zway, uh, pulling for uh, Egg Verde. Yeah. Um, 8-3, just, you know, absolute dominant performance. So that, that's that's my final answer. Eight, uh, uh, Egg Verde. It's Faisal, but we'll work on that going forward. That's okay. It's okay. You're cool <laughs> to do that because we got the same prediction. We're almost almost fully in sync there, big guy. It's the connection. It's the connection. I got snow. You yeah, got sun. Apologies. Apologies. Yeah, apologies. Yeah. Apologies if there's a little bit of uh. Yeah. I'm working on my working on my mic. Issues. We're all good. We are all good. Listen, we appreciate you joining us. We are gonna check in with you after the game as well, and we encourage all of you in the chat to send us your best comments during the game. We'll try to feature as many as we can. Maybe Dan and Mike will give you a bit of a shout out. Speaking of Dan and Mike, you know when I throw to them, it's time for a game. First semi-final. Let's go. Semi-finals time here in EMLS League Series 2. And that only means one thing. We've got some juicy FIFA action about to arrive on our screens. Two competitors who will be desperate to get to that final and have a shot at not just prize money, pride, but also be able to take down arguably another competitor who is hot in form right now. Ex Verde yesterday, as we heard from Zwayback, scored eight goals. He was what would look like unstoppable. However, on the other side, Dulster, he looked calm. He looked focused. Every single time a goal went against him, he made sure he went down the other end and scored right back. Mike LaBelle, this is certainly going to be a close encounter. I feel like the first goal is going to be very important in this matchup. And I'm not going to say that their styles are contradictory, but the way that they got their results were a little bit different. We looked at uh, Ex Verde, a lot of it was being able to overwhelm, very high pressure, a lot of risk to reward play. And Duelsta's kind of been the opposite, where you had a lot more of the buildup. It's been a little more methodical. He gets creative into the final third. And as you said, you could almost feel that he was going to stay calm and have that composure and be able to see out a game, even as uh, we saw Kim Amito making those comebacks and, and definitely forcing... Uh, an agenda and making the game really interesting. So Austin versus the New York Red Bulls then in our semi-finals and our first match on broadcast today. Of course, a place in the grand final awaits. As the other side of the bracket has Paolo Neto and Lamps. 
And that is not going to be a fun encounter, whoever you're going to face. Both of these competitors struggled against those two during the qualifiers, but right now it's about focusing on what is in front of you. Dulster already looking to try and launch an attack here, but being matched by many of the Austin players. Here's Mbappe. We'll find the ball through, and oh, it's so close. Pato almost opening the scoring. And you spoke about it, and if we do see a, a similar package in terms of the game plan from Ex Verde, he's either scoring a lot of goals, conceding a lot of goals, or scoring and conceding a lot of goals, because it was just so offensive focused, and it really overwhelmed Alan Avi, and it caught us all off guard. You gotta give a lot of credit to Ex Verde in committing to that plan. Well, something that Ex Verde was able to do yesterday in the quarterfinals was just get those shots away. No, they weren't always shots that were Definitely going in, sometimes they would collide with the defenders and then he was always there for the rebound. But it was a play style that really worked for him, just shooting whenever he had sight at goal, hoping that if it didn't end up in the back of the net, it would at least end up with someone who could do a job with it. And his reactions were always on point. He was very aware of where that ball could be bobbling to. And I wonder whether we'll, whether we'll see something similar today, but for now it's... Dulster coming forward, Neymar manages to beat the fullback quite easily, goes that one extra step further and... That's just gone wide. I was worried for a second. I thought it had snuck in. What a nearly of an opportunity. Knocking, making the movement. You're going to see a lot of these overlapping runs with the wingers, and it's just a matter of that first touch. You saw Neymar had a fantastic first touch, took him into space. Uh, Mbappe not quite able to convert, maybe a little too close to the goalkeeper. Mbappe on the turn will find Ronaldo. There's that shot that I was talking of. Not necessarily the clearest of opportunities, but... A lot of pros will always look for that extra percentage, look for that extra fine margin that will allow you to get closer to goal. Whereas Ex Verde just is a shoot on sight type of player and it really did work for him yesterday. So dulster has got to be aware of that and prepared to get his defenders in place if there is some sort of rebound that occurs. They did match up previously last year and Ex Verde was able to get the better of Dulster. So that's something that maybe plays on the mind, and this could be the finish as well! The goalkeeper movement was there, but it just opened up the path to Ronaldo. And I was going to say, we've had a couple early teasers. Both these guys prolific going forward. And something that's just very smart there from Dulsta, he waits to the last moment to convert on that volley, or strike the volley. Mainly because he wants to see if the goalkeeper's going to move or not. Waits for him to scoot over, hits it on the near post. So Exverde trying to show the goalkeeper movement, hoping you'd be able to predict it. But as you say, patience paying off for Dulster, but maybe on the other side, Mbappe could do something. Ex Verde shooting at sight once more, but no clear path for him. Dulster trying to respond with a quick counter attack, but Nathan able to stop Ronaldo in his tracks this time. So a nice early lead for Dulster, and exactly what the doctor ordered, especially when you consider the amount of goals that Ex Verde was able to find yesterday. But Alan Arvey also found the first goal of the game yesterday and then found himself down by eight. So something that Dulster will be well aware of just needs to make sure he stays tight defensively which is something he has done all tournament long the third best defensive record in the league from this tournament here's Ex Verde to try and ruin that it's denied though and if you're just tuning in again I would get your snacks out get some popcorn ready this is not going to be a low scoring affair happily go on record you can just tell there's so much space offensively for both these guys to work with and we've already had a couple of those nearly opportunities whether it was a tap in or one pass short or maybe a slight misread but they're always in the final third well, that's a good ball and that lino is going to allow that one to play on neymar just on side but what do you do from here ball rolls inside plays it to mbappe turns onto the right and the left but looking for that extra pass didn't work out he wasn't too keen on taking the shot and I feel like the playstyle difference Mike is that we probably would have seen the shot a little bit earlier there if that was Exverde. You're not wrong in terms of an analyst viewpoint. Uh, Ex Verde has a certain flow with his attack. If anything, you could say when it works that it's amazing, it's incredible. Puts you in a situation to get some of those bounces that could be very favorable. However, if it doesn't click, then you're always saying, why didn't you make the extra pass or take the extra touch? Because at the end of the day, especially at professional FIFA at this level, it's all about efficiency. He shoots, he scores. I was just about to up. say, you know, Ex Verde, he's got the Don't second get me most talking. shots in the Don't tournament. Don't get me talking. It always happens. Blimey. Right when I say, I mean, oh, it's been like high octane, and boom, on point. There it is. Outside of the box, finesse shot wasn't timed to perfection. Uh, it's something that's a little bit more unique to Ex Verde as well. As you've been saying from the jump, he shoots frequently. He's going to take a little more quantity of options. And from outside the box, inside the box, first time, 
uh, after some touches, after some skills, it does have variety. Here's Ronaldo trying to instantly respond his Dulster. On average, every leg, Exverde is having at least eight shots, whereas Dulster down to just around five. So that just shows play styles are slightly different, but here's Mbappe trying to get it back to Neymar. Dulster always looking to get the higher percentage chances. He just has to be a little bit aware of Exverde's play style and where he's going to be shooting from. Maybe close him down a little bit quicker if he does have the ball on the edge of the box. We've seen a couple of goals now from outside the area of the tournament. I remember one yesterday, Neymar scoring, timed green. But R9 showing why he's so important to have on the pitch. It doesn't matter. Left foot, right foot, of course, five-star weak foot. He can bang them in from any distance. Even though he can be that poacher, also has the hawk play style. Ronaldo trying to fire once more, but that is not going to work out. And between the two of them, you almost have a duels to the doctor, where he's, he's identifying, he's diagnosing when he's on that offensive end, really trying to pass it into the back of the net and just, just move it around the defense. And then you have someone like Ex Verde, maybe a little more of an assassin, where he's just shooting from everywhere. Uh, he's he's going to take a lot of opportunities. He's going to keep you guessing. Definitely has a certain fluidity to that offensive approach in that final third again. A little more unpredictable in certain ways. It's difficult to play against someone who will just sh constantly shoot on sight. And it's what well, something Alan Avi found yesterday is that that ball can end up anywhere once it leaves the foot of a player. Your defender will block it naturally, but where does it go afterwards? At the moment, dulster has been able to contain that. He's been able to handle it. He's had players in the right places. He's been able to switch and get control of it. Wasn't able to handle the shot from R9, though. Ex Verde will be delighted that that one's gone in the back of the net. I mean, I'd say a shot from there maybe works 50% of the time. Just at a rough guess from my own personal experience. The keeper sometimes will just be in the right area for it. Goalkeeper movement can help as well. But that one catches Dulster ever so slightly off guard. And Exverde grabs the equaliser. We're tied up one to one after 45. Remember, it's two legs of FIFA here in the semi finals. And that's Ooh. a fantastic ball, but Petr Cech, no! Whoa, that was a worrying time. But Petr Cech showing he knows how to handle business. And just a, a beautiful splitting through ball. Kind of looks off uh, another offensive player, and it throws off Dulster defensively and allows for that gap. A lot of chances being created, though, and I think you alluded to this. It's very unlikely to be a low-scoring game between these two with the amount of chances we've already seen. It's Renato Sanchez and Pozuelo linking up in the middle. R9 just looking for that ball, finds Mbappe as well, and that's a great block by Nathan. Very much needed, goes out for a corner. Neither of these competitors are known uh, necessarily for closing out games in terms of holding the ball or game management. They're very forward thinkers. Uh, and you're going to see a lot of different ingenuity just around that final third. Arnold beats one, beats two. Mbappe can't get hold of it, though, so Xverde doing his job defensively. Can't allow Dulster to have too much creative freedom, I feel, because if you do, he will punish you. I think might get the nail on the head. Almost doctor-like, surgical, diagnosing, dissecting his opponent. Whereas for Xverde, he just gets a hammer out and starts walloping. Hits that ball as I hard like as he can analogies. from wherever he can. <laughs> as Neymar now finds Ronaldo. Oh, that's a lovely dig. Oh, Tell you oh. about that for surgical. Wow. Uh, again, though, you see it with Exverde. Uh, there's a lot that you're not maybe able to predict. He doesn't do things by the meta all the time, uh, whether it's the crossing or like some of the long shots, just different ways to incorporate an offensive approach. And the reason that we're talking about duels to being so surgical is because you can see what he's planning. As you're seeing the build-up, you can tell what options he's looking to open up. If you're a viewer, you can look for some of the, the pass and go, the, the, the little bit of movement, the one-twos. You can kind of see what's on his mind. Small mistake from Exverde allows Dulster to regain possession. Drag hmm. back, Mbappe still has the ball. It's fortunate, but Dulster will take it. And he fires a second into the back of the net. And the New York Red Bulls find and themselves 2-1 up. And you need those types of situations. Every single matchup that we have commentated over, that we have really analyzed and, and, and discussed in deeper depth, it's included moments where there was a friendly bounce or potentially a rebound or a post being hit. Something happened. I just think it's the nature of FIFA. Even here, look at this beautiful instant replay. That, that If you shoot to the corner anywhere else, and that's going to beat Petr Cech. 
Yeah, it's one of those where I think that Ex Verde will want back, but this one I think Ex Verde will be a bit frustrated with as well. Dulster capitalising on a mistake, just being persistent with Mbappe. Constantly waiting for that ball to come back to him and eventually managing to grab the goal. Can Ex Verde answer back straight away? No, he can't. So now Dulster can launch another counter-attack and he really does quickly usher that ball up to the other side of the pitch. Sometimes can be too quickly, but he holds on to it on this occasion. There's a lot of space for Vinicius. Will he get to the byline? Yes, he will. Plays it back. Nathan's there. Just about holds on. Another one of those situations or sequences you might want to have a second guess at. There's so many of those that end up being very 50-50. You think your opponent's going to cut back? Is he going to go for a skill move? Is he going to stay forward? When is the layoff happening? Nice pass to Mbappe. Shifts it onto his left, but Petr Cech gets down quickly again. And that's not two, but three saves now that Dulster's goalkeeper has made. And we always talk about goalkeeper selection and preference, and it was Donnarumma's show a couple of weeks ago in League Series 1. Petr Cech looking to try and put some respect on his name. And I'm a little surprised after the pause, Ex Verde's being a little more uh, aggressive with some of his defensive approach. The only reason I'm surprised by that is because we have two legs. And you don't want to go too high up. You don't want to raise your line and then open up all the space in behind for maybe dual stood and nip something just before going into that second leg. Nice ball to Pato on the left here. Link it up with whoever he can find at the moment. There's a little bit of space in the middle. Mbappe just trying to search for a gap between the defenders. Instead, Dulster has to retreat. R9 doesn't get the pass. And Ex Verde, if he allows any of those passes to get through, he knows full well with the way that Dulster's playing, looking for those extra percentages, it's very likely going to end up in a goal. So he has to be able to make sure that he doesn't make those mistakes. On the other side, though, looks to try and capitalize on maybe a little bit of space at the back. Plays one inside to Lorente. Pato now on the edge of the box. Does have support from R9 and Mbappe but can't do much with it. This could be a dangerous moment for Dulster though. Vinicius, loads of space in the middle. Will find Pato, could shoot if he wants to, but hasn't been doing it. Finds a Bappe instead, and that's a great save and a much needed one for Ex Verde. In that circumstance, again, once he gets that penetrating pass to Mbappe, the pass across is what you're looking for. So many of the 1v1, especially when the keeper leaves uh, his line, unless you're going for a little dink or a chip that we have seen uh, effectiveness actually from both of these competitors, the keepers get a foot on everything, or they get a hand onto something. They really take away the angles for some of the 1v1s. And certainly with the latest title update, there has been changes to the goalkeepers. And, you know, I think a lot of these pro players are having to adjust, find new ways to score as that one's just booted out for a corner. It looked a little bit worrying at times. And I think once we get to EMLS Cup, for example, a lot of these players are going to be a bit more well-versed with how to score again. I think there's a lot of question marks over play styles because you, you learn so many bad habits throughout FIFA. Your brain naturally, your muscle memory works on how to score. And then as soon as the title update comes through, if there's any sort of change to the finishing or the goalkeepers, you can be in those bad habits for quite some time. But these are amazing pro players who do adjust very quickly. Here's our night wasn't able to get the shot away. The keeper's come out, but it's offside anyway. And with this in particular update, it was also a major shift from the speed of the game, some of the touches, the passing, the low driven passes, defensive awareness and positioning. There's a lot of things that shifted, and this is our first glimpse of what it looks like from a pro end. This is the first event that, that's happened since this major patch. So that's why we're bringing it up, because it's such a talking point right now in the community. One last chance for Dulster. Tries to play the extra pass as well. Rather than just trying to nod it in with R9, he thought he'd be able to mm. knock it back down to Pato. And that is definitely a chance that's gone begging, and I think he probably knows it. But alas, 2-1 is the final score in the first leg. Dulster and New York Red Bulls have a lead over Austin FC. Faisal, you're watching in the wings, and Dulster, you know, he's put on a very impressive and solid performance, but there's certainly chances there for Ex Verde. Dulster right now shaking his head. He knows this should be more than 2-1. It's certainly at the end there with the free header, but hey, that was tense, guys. That was tense. There were chances both ways. There was a lot of, you know, strategy being developed and uh, learned through the game. And this is the beauty of two legs. You take what you learn in leg one, Mike LaBelle, and you bring it to leg two. How'd you feel uh, both players did in this one? 
Uh, I feel that Dulsta will be happy that he's ahead, but that he's definitely hungry for more. Uh, and the same with X Verde. I was looking at this game and all the chances that were actually missed between both competitors. You think about how many opportunities they had in the box, even 1v1s, and uh, not everything was converted. As you see, this gorgeous, gorgeous ball gorgeous, here, gorgeous. over the top, yeah. chip through ball, and then he hesitates. He waits with R9. This, instead of being a 2-1 game, could easily be 3-2, could even be 4-3 if we're dealing with efficiency. Uh, I'm sure that we're going to be seeing the goals, not necessarily as you see the finesse shot opens up the body, goalkeeper out of position, as opposed to all the missed chances. Because even X Verde, I'm telling you, there was a point where he had three or four opportunities in a row and Petrchak got down to it or just bounced this way or you saw a kick save and it didn't end up being a rebound. It didn't hit the post or it was gathered up. And those are the types of chances that have to be finished. You have to be more clinical. As you see, a little bit of good fortune here from Mbappe goes yeah. with the drag back, bounces yeah. back to him, quicker to react, and, and that's the decider at the moment. That's part of the game though, right, Mike? Like, you got to take your chances. We know X Verde was fortunate to get a lot of those go his way, but he also played well enough. He didn't look like he let it affect him too much in terms of mentality. Again, you can't at this point, right? Because you lose your head a little bit, right, Mike? You're, you're going to lose the game pretty quickly. Well, and it's the nature of competitive FIFA to a certain degree. The the margins are so small. They're so slim. All these guys have the ability. So often when we do see separation, it's from a mental perspective. Uh, and some of these bounces are going to happen for you, happen against you. A goalkeeper makes a great save, makes a kind of a, a suspect save. We've seen all of this happen even from yesterday. So as a competitive player, you have to be able to work through that and then make adjustments when you're dealing with facing that adversity. What do you think, Dan? Uh, calling that game, it felt like there weren't a, a ton of huge, wide open, that has to go in kind of moments, but there were chances each way. And again, both both players showing why they're in this position in this game. I think that's because both players defensively were pretty sound. They weren't allowing yeah. that final yeah. pass to come through. Dulsta always looking to get that, you know, the extra percentage to get the open goal, but it wasn't really happening because, you know, you'd see Nathan making those blocks. Marquinhos would be there to make the blocks for X Verde. And you could say the same on the other side. The amount of times X Verde was just shooting because he was in the area, rather so than finding a gap and finding a clear sight line on goal. And okay, we had three goals and there were some fantastic moments, but I think you're right. We haven't had that many clear-cut chances and the chances which were a little bit more clear-cut weren't necessarily capitalized on. There were a few mistakes yeah. made by both players. They'll know that, they'll want those back. The keepers have been a big influence, as they always are. Petr Cech in particular stepping up, even though some of the shots were directed straight at him. Perhaps that's something X Verde could have worked on, maybe putting that ball to the right or left of Petr Cech and it could have been different. But it is uh, setting us up for a great second leg, yeah. which I'm sure, you know, everyone needs to be watching and start predicting in the chat because it could go either way. I, I honestly what? couldn't tell you, even though I've gone for my prediction earlier, X Verde hmm. can easily get back into this one. All right. I, I also, a reminder for those that are watching on Twitch and in the chat, we've got a contest for you right now where you can win a custom MLS jersey, MLS store gift cards, and about 120,000 FIFA points up for grabs. To be eligible, make sure you're signed in, link your account with the Sport Buff extension. You have to link your account. I keep saying it. You must link your account to qualify. Uh, to link your account, click the leaderboard. Then, in settings, you can link your Twitch account. At the end of the show, the top 10 on the leaderboard will receive a whisper on Twitch to claim their prize. Restrictions do apply. You can see the panel below for contest rules. Of course, keep sending in your comments during the match. We will try to feature them in leg two. Speaking of, it is time. Dan and Mike, let's go. Leg number two is upon us then, and the chance still in the grand finals, of course, of EMLS. League Series 2 is on the horizon for one of these two competitors. Austin FC find themselves two goals down to one. And X Verde will be looking to try and grab that equalizer as early as possible. But on the other side, Dulster nodding along, bobbing along, getting a little bit excited, but he was shaking his head rather than nodding his head after that game because he knows, Mike, he could have had a couple more and that first leg. And we often dice and slice and, and really break down what's the difference between competitors. In this case, my feedback for each of them would be the same. Neither of them were clinical enough. They were in the right areas at the right times. And when they shot, they should have passed. It was a, a, an often occurrence or even shot type, maybe more specific to X Verde because he got shots off, but it was almost as if he was going for a low driven or he powered it right at the goalkeeper. Just wasn't as clinical and didn't have a high enough conversion rate to be ahead in this matchup. In the qualifiers, when they faced up against each other, Dulster only won by the one goal there as well. It was just 1-0, but only across one leg. But X Verde could get the first goal here, and there's the chip. It's perfect from Neymar. And X Verde gets the early equaliser on aggregate. Game on. 
And he said, Mike, what are you talking about with efficiency? Beautiful through ball. Duelstas players get caught out of position just slightly. Green time, chip finish. And we've seen with both of these guys in particular, they score the chips. They go for the chips. They time the chips. That diagonal motion in the ocean. You can find the back post that wiggles in. And it's, a, I don't want to say a new way to finish, but it definitely feels that it's, it's garnered a certain level of effectiveness. And it, it just tastes good. It's that extra sauce that you want to add into the equation. And we're seeing it at the pro level quite frequently. Listening to you talk sometimes just makes me hungry. I'm going to be completely honest with you. After this series, I might have to devour some sort of burger. But Exverde devoured that goal, 2-2. And Dulta will be a little bit frustrated. He didn't actually capitalize on those chances that he had in the early stages or the late stages of leg number one. Unable to do something with that initial attack, but able to regain possession here with R9. And just to find a tell as well. And Mbappe and Pato waiting in the middle, hoping that a pass can come through, hoping they're generating enough space. It's about what you do with it, though. Pato plays one more! And the finish Ooh. is exquisite from Neymar. No hesitation to smash that one into the top corner. And it's just so well-timed. The adjustments, the arrangements, almost forces the, the defender to make a decision. You've got Neymar to the right, where you can take a shot directly on. It forces him to commit extra layoff, offside trap, perfectly well-timed. And then he's regained his lead, of course. And as we said at the beginning, we didn't think this was going to be a clean sheet or a slow-moving game, and it hasn't been. Far from it. Two competitors who just want to grab goals. Different play styles, but they're both effective in their own way. Here's Exverde once more. Neymar, who scored at both ends. Maybe looking to try and to double up for Exverde and Austin FC. Chips one through, finds Pato, tries to dink it across. But defensively, Dulster is sound and he's able to stop that one in its tracks as early as possible. And I always talk about this when you're playing FIFA. We are all going to be naturally better at some aspect uh -oh. of the game. Uh-oh. Pass is on. Hold that oh, he could just go for a ball roll. Oh, it's perfect. Ooh. Ball rolls have been difficult from what I've seen in the tournament over these past couple of days. But Mbappe and Dulster making it 4-2. And speaking of the ball roll, he needed a couple extra touches afterward. That was not the case. Uh, in the previous patches, the one singular ball roll and you'd be around the goalkeeper. We had, I think, two additional touches before finally tapping at home. Uh, and what I was going to say is something that I always talk to people, you're going to be naturally gifted in a certain area or areas of the game. Uh, we're talking about FIFA, of course. Uh, and then it's a matter of building up in all the categories and being able to maximize where you already excel. Both of these guys, from a natural tendency, are offensive players. And they have a lot of, I would say, free flow and impulse to go with some structure, but naturally they're so gifted offensively, and that's why you're going to see them going forward. You're not going to have that additional possession play unless that possession means they're going to create opportunities or it's gain, It's going for that opportunity. They're not just having the ball to have the ball. Well, we need to see Dulster's defensive record show here now, though. He's got that two-goal cushion, and of course he will still be pushing for those goals. On average, he's only been conceding 1.4 goals per leg, so that would suggest this is going to be a difficult time for Exverde. But after the amount of goals he was able to score yesterday, I wouldn't rule anything out just yet. Anything's possible, Dan. Anything's possible oh, at this point. Something could be possible as well, just as we say it. R9 hammers one home. It's 2-2 in the leg, but still 4-3 in favor of the New York Red Bulls. And you see just that little precise drop-off, catches the offside trap again. R9, right place, right time, across the body. It's beautiful build-up and uh, the, the final pass. A lot of people just won't have that, and it was timed to perfection. And I feel like we're not going to see Dulster turtle up and try and defend this lead. It's evident purely from that goal and the way he approached the game just in those last moments after scoring his second of the game. Instead, I think he just wants to outscore Exverde here. And it certainly is a strategy that could be a risky one, but it's worked out so far, still having the goal lead. But with every attack that Exverde has, you know, we could be very close to seeing an equaliser on aggregate. Pato just about rescues that one, wrestles away from his opponent. And now he's actually making the run down the right-hand side. Can play it inside 2R9, who strikes, and there's the equaliser. 4-4 on aggregate. And I was saying about the defensive record of Dulster. Is he going to be able to breed from that scenario? No, he is not. Decisive, definite, exact. You see him kind of turn inside and then whip in that cross. And as you take that down with R9, you have the timed volley. 
you just take another one of those maybe finishes to being something that you're definitely going to convert. And I really like the pick out of that pass. It's a difficult pass to make, and you don't see the crosses all that often. So it's another way of changing up your game, having certain levels of versatility. I think this is really good to see Exverde performing in such a way and really shining because there were a couple of question marks around his victory yesterday with some fortunate goals. But he really is demonstrating. He's got everything here today. R9 times it green, Ooh. saved by Petr Cech, but so close to making it five on aggregate. And Dulster, a little bit rattled in these last few minutes, has to try and stop this barrage of attacks that we're seeing from Exverde. If anything, Dulcer needs to change the pace and try to get himself to halftime. Seems like he's doing a good job at the moment, at least with this current attack, just in terms of his players being really wide and slowing down the game because he's not playing at a favorable pace. Not when Exverde started to build some of this momentum. You can just see it in every attack. Dulcer and the New York Red Bulls coming forward. A lot of room for Pato here on the left. Will continue to drive, tries to play it across, gets a second bite of the cherry here. Maybe unexpectedly getting the ball, turns past two defenders, tries to get past the third, but Nathan, the final point of defence, doing his job, retrieving that ball. And just some passes around the back for Exverde to wait until maybe one last attack just before this halftime whistle goes, but if he sees an opportunity, I'm sure he will take it. That's exactly how he plays when he's in front of goal. I wouldn't be surprised if it would happen elsewhere on the pitch. But as we tick over to the 45th and get our added on time of one minute, it's now or never. It means he gets a free attack, or should get a free attack. As I say that, Dulster might get one if he's quick. He will not have time then in leg number two. And it is all square, poised perfectly for our final 45 minutes, Mike Lubber. We're going to revisit some of these goals. Look at that little drop-off pass. It's just gorgeous. Uh, you, you talk about timing. Pato here, again, with the takedown and then timing that finish green to hit the volley. There's nothing the goalkeeper can do. You can't bring him out. You can't close the angle. There's not enough time for you to make those adjustments. It's just such a quality pick out from Exverde. And it's you couldn't ask for a better matchup. You look for a semifinal, it's four all. We're going into the second half of the second leg. This is what you tuned in for. And may the best man win. So Exverde and Dulster, who will both be featuring at the EMLS Cup in Austin, Texas, may I add, at South by Southwest. And Exverde trying to book his ticket in a final here in the EMLS League Series 2. He's on the comeback. He was down by two goals, but now we're all square 4-4 four, four with 45 to play. Dulster was rocked ever so slightly, but... Certainly in the quarterfinals, every single time he started to face a little bit of troubles, he always had that response, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to get another one here. Anything can happen, and anything will happen in EMLS. Neymar into Pato. Assistance in the middle from Fafana. And R9's there waiting in the wings once more to maybe strike one home for Austin. Here's Mbappe, though, almost gets oh. that turn, and that could have been deadly. And now that was... Uh... Quite a heel, I'd say, from Nathan there. Kind of came out of nowhere. I thought he was going to complete that extra pass. And as we go into the, the later stages of this match, I can already start to feel a little more of the tension. There's going to be a little more stress here. And this might come down to who can handle their nerves better. And nerves are difficult to deal with, especially in FIFA Esports. One mistake could be enough to send you out of this tournament. Single elimination, of course. So you don't get any second chances, no lower bracket to think of. You've all got to take advantage of any mistakes that your opponent makes as well. That's something that both players have done very well already in these two legs. And those chances have been there. They've really made sure that they took advantage of them. Whether it be just regaining possession and stopping the other person from being able to have attacks or actually finding the goal as a back bait. Isn't quite through, but will be able to stretch his legs. Gets one back into Neymar. Can't get the shot away yet, but maybe Pato could. On the turn, R9. Oh, he doesn't bring it down. Dulster frustrated because he knows on any other day, R9 takes that down and he gets the shot away. Well, it was a strange animation on the first touch because he had it on the left and there was no chance of a block in sight. Switches it back to the right and it just throws off some of the approach oh, no. play. And of course, as per usual with FIFA, you miss one opportunity. It's a cruel game. 
punishes you on the other end. 5-4. And Austin FC have made the comeback. Down by two. Now up by one. Next Verde. Showing us what he's made of once again. Dolster. He's going to be an absolute tatters. So close at one end. R9 in a position where I've seen him 90% of the time bring it down and fire it home. A shake of the head from Dolster, and then next Verde goes right up the other end to punish. And those are the kind of goals that can really affect your mental game. But both players straight into the tactics screen. Changes being made. And this is where your coaching is so important. Uh, often to work with you on the discipline side. Because if you're Dolster in this position, you've been able to constantly create chances. It's only the 60th minute. You're down one goal. You have plenty of time. So maybe you do want to make some substitutions, but you don't have to go too crazy with tactical adjustments. You don't have to make anything uh, extreme one way or the other because you have so much clock to work with. So for the first time, Dulster finds himself behind in this matchup. What does he have in the tank? What has he got left to do? Pato not able to quite get there. Donnarumma quick off his line. And next Verde, quick to drop that ball and play the pass as well. He'll be looking to quickly release some sort of counter-attack. So we've got 25 minutes left in this one, so not a huge amount of time to work with, but still plenty for some more goals. Mbappe trying to just lift that one over Marquinhos, but it doesn't quite get there. Marquinhos has quite the stature behind him. Oh, again, another mistake. R9 can latch onto this one. Surely there's a chance here, and Mbappe will make sure it's 5-5. Five -five. There's the mistakes that I was talking about. You've got to make them pay when something like that happens. And just a massive error, middle of the pitch, goalkeeper clearance, just wasn't open. And you can see that Dulce has increased his pressure a little bit. And uh, Ex Verde, I think, did the opposite, where he's looking to slow up and have a little more possession play. And I was going to bring up, we really haven't seen that from Ex Verde in any of the competitions, League Series 1, League Series 2, where he's had that game management or being able to slow down a game dramatically. It is something that comes with experience. And even though Ex Verde, it's not his first rodeo. It's his second year in the EMLS, but for Dulster, this is his fifth time competing in the EMLS and of course a three-time champion as well and all three of those victories came in the same year series one series two and the EMS Cup a treble winner and he's looking to try and get into another final here 5-5 five -five at the moment but Pozuelo in the box dangerous into Neymar R9 can anyone get the shot away no they can't just did a tad too much maybe had one two two opportunities to take a shot wasn't able to release it this is where it's dangerous, Fair though. Fair defensively, yeah. Dolster pressing, and it does leave gaps at the back, but he was able to just make Ex Verde hesitate there. As the press still coming through, second man trying to do his job. Ex Verde doing well to navigate around all of these New York Red Bull players that are being a nuisance, but every time the ball is won back by Dolster, he's just instantly sprinting up the pitch. Trying to launch this counter attack, trying to take advantage of maybe a lack of numbers at the back. Pozuelo finds Duncan, who's steaming up from right back. Where's the support in the middle? Can he actually find a pass? Or does Dulster have to retreat? He will just slow this one down. Neymar now. Into R9. Neymar makes the run as well. Tries to go over the top. It was so close. Kind of getting into remaining. that point, Dan. Yeah, the clock. Clock is about the next point to score type of situation. De Laurenti gets the ball through. Oh, and it's a great defensive oh. challenge. Oh. Had to happen. Otherwise, that was the goal. Oh, they could have been goodness. sending Ex Verde and Austin into the final. We know full well with this amount of time left, the goal here should be enough to seal the fate of your opponent. Duncan. Again, no one to really work with. Has to go back. Has to recycle play ever so slightly. Neymar even coming deep just to receive the ball. Is Dulster going to play for the last opportunity before extra time here? It looks like, with the way he's playing, he might. It's a veteran move. It's something you should do if you can in the circumstance that you're not going to be countered. Either get extra time or you've got the go-ahead in the 90th. It's sensible. Some don't like it, but it is a part of the game. We take over into the 90th now. One minute of added on time, so that's one last attack, a free attack where you cannot be punished for giving the ball away. R9 
will give the ball away, but here's the lack of punish. The referee will blow the whistle, and we're going to extra time in our first semi-final of the day between the New York Red Bulls and Austin FC. Dulster and Exverde demonstrating they cannot be separated after 180 minutes, Mike Lavelle. And you see the error there. That might sit with Exverde a little bit because he had the lead and he, he, he probably didn't have to kill too much of the game at that point. And it's, again, more of a gift. It, it was a definite error from the goalkeeper passing out of the back. And we could say if we're critiquing Dulsta in this, uh, I guess, second leg in particular, he seems to be a little hesitant on a couple of his finishes. He's missed some opportunities in the box that on a different day, maybe any other day, he would have converted, whether it's the first touch that let him down or maybe the second touch or just the misconnection, whatever it could be or may be. But that's why I talked about with a lot of the tension. I'm, dr I'm drenched in sweat. I need to come out of the first shirt. I, this is the game that it's starting to feel that way, where you know as we get into the nitty-gritty, the next goal is going to be so decisive for the winner. And over the top through ball to Mbappe. Could have been enough, but Mbappe bringing it down wasn't able to get the ball ahead of him. And Dulster stealing the ball back away. During that break, Dulster's coach was saying that his opponent is, and I quote, shook him. Now, I don't know what the kids say nowadays, but I think that means he is not in a good place mentally. And here's Dulster to try and punish that oh. one, but able to do it as David Ginola has come on for both teams I believe and he really can be an influential player that was a poor choice from Dulsta as well I don't think the cross was the the option you had multiple players you could pick out uh, within the box and I was just going to say when you get into extra time if you play a lot of FIFA it often comes down to fatigue now because you're going to have more error that you wouldn't have previously where one player could just boost by a uh, maybe a midfielder or even a defender who's now looking a little low on stamina, especially if you've been playing aggressive tactics. Here's Dulster, Vinicius, and one more, and what a save from Donnarumma. That could have been oh it for Dulster. Any goal here in extra time could be enough to oh win this tie. Oh my goodness, what a Remember save. It? Save of the day, easily. Oh, It's not golden goal, but there's such little time in extra time that... One more you'd feel would be enough to send you to a grand final. Mbappe and Ginola working well. The pairing steal the ball back and now Exverde again could punish Dulster here. What a switch of play that is and look at the amount of space for Lorente. Fires one back inside. Who gets the header? Santos does. And his defensive work is so crucial there. Oh, this is a scary game. Uh, you, you could feel it. Tell you Donnarumma making a difference there with that save. These goalkeepers have so much pressure on them. Donnarumma proving his worth. Here's Exverde. One last chance before the halftime whistle it is denied. And the referee will blow it. So we're going to have 15 more minutes between these two competitors. And remember, if they are not separated, we would have a penalty shootout to see who is going to be in that final. Now, we've not seen a penalty shootout so far in the MLS in this series. There's that Incredible. save again, Donnarumma. Incredible. Wow, what a strong hand as well. We've seen those being saved and then punched into the back of the net sometimes, Mike. But uh, well, usually when you make that extra pass, you're going to be good for the conversion. That's why we've been always seeing that extra pass. The goalkeeper's out of position and it's a wrap. 15 minutes then. Who has got the bottle? Who's got the nerve to try and Grab that goal, send yourself into the final. Don't put it down to fate in the penalty shootout. Lorente to Ginola, and there's the goal that could be sending Austin FC into the grand final. David Ginola, a legend in his own right, a hero in the game. And that's gonna be 6-5 now to Exverde. It was an odd start, if you saw uh, from the kickoff, uh, Exverde took the ball all the way back to the goalkeeper and then started his attack. So very defensive approach, but he still gets the gap. And once you find that gap, Ginola with the fresh legs, the five-star weak foot, just batters it into the top corner. And that leaves 12 minutes for Dulster to find an equalizer again. This has been a tie that's been back and forth over and over. It was Dulster ahead. He was up by two at one point. Then found himself down by one. He equalized once more. And again, he has to come from behind here. If anyone can do it, it's going to be Dulster. 
Previously, every time we've seen him in a semi-final in EMLS, he has always won it. Can he do it again here? Vinicius Jr. needs some assistance. Finds Pozuelo. Ginola on the other side. Challenged. No penalty, though. Lorente. Such an important tackle at the back. And now Exverde has possession and will look to eat away at this clock. Whoop. Who gives the ball away, Mbappe? A huge header. Here's Pato. Space now for Pozuelo. Won't shoot. Instead, just wants the player to be onside. Ginola steals it back. How has he still got the ball? Ginola can't strike. And Exverde clinging on right now. Mike LaBelle speechless. Indeed. Dulster. <laughs> Oh, I can't mouth use my right goalkeeper now. the way that he's using his goalkeeper. He's super confident trying to pass it out of the back, and it's dangerous. Oh this could be the final nail in the coffin. Kylian Mbappe rounds the keeper. Can't get the shot away, though. Still time for Dulster and the New York Red Bulls. Nathan into Sanchez. You have to imagine this is the last chance for Dulster to grab a goal and take us to a penalty shootout in our first semi final of the day. We tick over into the 121st minute now. So this is do or die. Vinicius Jr. Assistance from David Ginola. The ball through to Mbappe is denied. And Marquinhos will clear. Can this ball be won back? No, it cannot. Exverde and Austin FC are into the final. Eliminating Dulster and the New York Red Bulls. And always the underdog. Always surprising. Exverde does it again. 11 goals. From a neutral perspective, you couldn't ask for a better game. It was late. It was great. It was offensive. It came down to Ginola. Pretty simple turn from the entry pass. Uses that five-star weak foot. Again, maximizes that there's no disadvantage. Both feet are equal and buries it. And it was even shaky at the end, too. It's got to be said. Some of the goalkeeper decisions, some of the passing out of the back, some of the lobs forward. Didn't look nearly as composed or confident. But as we look at this replay from kickoff, Pretty traditional turn, unleash, green time finish. Ginola's never going to miss from that position. And Dulce had the lead. Dulce had the opportunities. You could say the same about Xverdi. Had a lot of opportunities, especially if we're breaking down that first leg. Just think about how many chances each of these guys created. And it was only a 2-1 game at the time. Oh, I can't believe how many goals we got in that game, guys. <laughs> eight goals combined in leg number two and it started fast it started furious and it ended without a penalty shoot and again we still haven't gone to spot kicks to decide what who could go on let's take a look at some of the highlights guys because there were so many to go through in this game and i really thought that was the one dan where we were gonna get two penalties but no and now uh, ex verde says hey i may be down but i'm not out he started this one pretty early I mean, we we thought that maybe this would be the one, right? Just because it was so difficult to separate these two. Couldn't do it after 180. There was chances at both ends. And it, it did look shaky at the back at times for Rex Verde. So I was convinced Dulster was going to get that one last opportunity. But we have to take our hats off and give massive congratulations to Rex Verde because time and time again, he is underestimated by, well, the predictions in general, whether it be Twitch chat, whether it be us. And he always seems to find a way and he's able to take down not just a player who's, you know, hot in form right now in FIFA 22, but previously in other iterations of FIFA, yeah. uh, a three-time EMLS champion. That is not an easy feat to achieve. This was my favorite goal, Mike LaBelle. It started with his right back uh, halfway through his own half and ended with R9 in the middle, but all that play was developed through the middle and then back through the wing. A lot of recycling, as you like to say. And it was fantastic delivery. Again, we don't see yeah. tons of crosses. Yes. And then at, at the pro level, they're taking those down to increase the percentage of conversion versus trying to go first time with maybe a volley or even if it's a header or some other animation. He kind of takes that half touch and then hits the side volley uh, and he's able to convert. Big mistake here. Even after the comeback, when you see a mistake like this, and it's just a very simple pass across to Mbappe, you start to think, okay, Dulce has now shifted back the momentum on his side, at least mentally, and then an extra time, full reset, both guys going for it from kickoff, the second portion of extra time. Relatively simple again, Lorente hits the feet of Ginola, times the green, make no mistake about it. He's celebrating as you should. You get a little bit of a smirk and a smile from Ex Verde, and he's moving into the final. His first final ever in EMLS history. Man, the faces say it all, don't they, Dan? Like, 
obviously expression on one, elation, and then just turmoil on the other. Duelsta had his chance, and this is what it means for X Verde, our first one through to the League Series 2 final, just waiting for Paolo Neto or Lamps to be, well, to decide who of those two will go through as well. Either way, it should be a fantastic, fantastic final with one more fantastic semifinal, I imagine to go as well. Dan, do you think we're going to get penalties at any point in this league? We haven't got one. Not even a, said, I'm a, not even a foul in the box. Like, yeah. Ever since ah. I've arrived, we've not had a penalty. So <laughs> I will officially take the blame. But I think that might be a good thing. You know, sometimes penalties, no one wants to be a part of them. No one wants to watch them. Okay, some people want to watch them if you are one I'd of those I'll watch people. them. I'll watch yeah, them. We, I'm just throwing yeah, that out one there. Of those I don't want to be I don't want to be in the penalty kick shootout, but yeah. I'll definitely consume it from an outsider view. Yeah. All right, says a lot uh, about your personality, I think, Mike. But uh, Faisal, I mean, you know, we, we've had Austin get through to the grand final. Yep. Like, Exverde, who was eighth seed, he only got through to this broadcast purely off of gold difference. Gold difference, difference. Gold he difference had beaten man. half of this, this, this competitor list throughout EMLS Series 2, and then he's got into a final. Like, that shows how closely competitive all these players uh -huh. are, but he will be delighted with that one. It's just a point we continue to hammer home. The talent is so good, top to bottom. All right, let's head over to Susanna, standing by with the guy who came out on top of this game. It's our player interview presented by Cheese It. X Verde, after coming so close last season, <laughs> you are in a final in EMLS for the first time. How does it feel? Uh, it's 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 great. I mean, it's we came so close so many times. You know, last year in the semis, I had many leads that I kind of tossed away. But you know, at least we improving. <laughs> yeah, I should say so. And and it doesn't really feel right to call you an underdog in League Series Two, but you entered the weekend as the number eight seed. You took down Alan Avi, who was the number one seed. You just took down Duelsta, who is a three-time champion. What's been your secret sauce this weekend? Uh, I mean, there's uh, there's been a bit of, of luck in some of these goals, but it's always just going forward, having the confidence, knowing that any possible attack I can score. So even if I fall behind, I think I was behind two goals at one point, and it was still just like, I just need one attack and I'm back in the game. You certainly are, and you are in the final. You will face off against either Paolo Neto or Lamps. Now you are winless against both of these guys. How do you change that? Uh, well, I mean, I played Lamps the first day. That was a really bad day. I think I lost the majority of my games. <laughs> I played Paolo <laughs> re more recently, and it was a fairly, like, even matchup. So, yeah. I think it'll be a good game either way. I have a feeling we're, uh, we're for some excitement. Congratulations, x -Verdi. We'll see you in the final. Thank you. All right, Basil, back to you. I think it's time to start jumping on to my predictions and, and Zway's prediction as well, to be fair. So uh, we'll, we'll check in with him on the other side ahead of our next semifinal, which is getting set right now. We're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. It's Lambs versus Paolo Neto. It's EMLS League Series 2 presented by Coca-Cola.
Oh, we back and we back and we back. Welcome back, everyone, today to an EMLS League Series 2 presented by Coca-Cola. This was the moment that sent X Verde through to the final. Taking down duels to 6-5 on aggregate. One player through, one spot left in the final. You see what it means to him. And what a game. What a game it was. Oh my goodness. But nothing short should be taken away from Duel's display as well. His coach was telling him how well he played and deservedly so. What a performance by both players. So X Verde is through. He'll play either Lamps or Paolo Neto in the final. We're getting set for that one now. I am Faisal Camisa, of course, joined by Dan Gaskin and Mike LaBelle. If you haven't heard yet, today it's your last day to sign up for the January 31st EMLS Fan Challenge, a free-to-enter FIFA 22 PlayStation Tournament. If you're trying to enhance your FIFA, your FIFA Ultimate Team, you're going to want to compete in this. There are so many prizes to go around. There's two tournaments as well. One on the PS4 and the other on the PS5. For both, the top 64 will get FIFA points, but First place in the PS4 tournament will receive a PS5 and a customized EMLS jersey to add to their kit game. And then first place in the PS5 tournament will get $500 and a customized EMLS jersey. The competition starts Monday. Register now if you are interested. The link and more details are in the chat to check. So check the Twitch panels below. Mike, again, you love promoting these tournaments. I know you play every now and then in these tournaments as well. Sell it one more time. I've spent a lot of time playing in a bunch of the Open Series events. Uh, I just think it's a great way to get practice under your belt. It's a nice little gateway into the competitive community, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced player. And there's always a bunch of prizes. Therefore, even if you don't win, you still sort of win. And it's all about improving your squad anyway and having a good time with it. Plus, if you get an opportunity to win a PS5, I mean, I take uh, that chance crazy, every right? day of the week. I, I, yeah, I, I'll sign off on that. Uh, if that can be somewhere in a contractual agreement, I'd love to to join up for the, the PS5 giveaways. But uh, yeah, I, I highly well, recommend right it. Uh, if you play against there. me, you I'm going to beat you. Your PS4. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I have a PS4 and a PS5. What's up? I'm ready. All right, still relax, bro. <laughs> Supply chain issues, bro. No PS5. Don't get me in revved up. Don't yet. get me revved up. Not yet. I'm scared Not to get yet. rid of the Not PS4. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about our next semifinal match. It's between Minnesota United's Lamps and Atlanta United's Paolo Neto. Dan, I'll turn it to you to set us up. This is a gigantic matchup. A matchup we actually saw already in Series 1 quarterfinals. On that occasion, Paolo Neto was able to get the better of Lamps 5-2. But Lamps looks like a different beast after taking down the goal machine, the previous EMLS Series 1 winner. So I think that he'll be out for revenge here, Mike LaBelle. I agree with you. I see a revenge matchup here. He's he's the type of player that also holds a grudge. And if you if you heard, we we, we saw a coaching shift because in League Series 1, we heard Tex on the mic. I'm not sure who's coaching him now, but it was not Tex's voice. So we, we might have had a, a coach movement maybe wasn't happy about something both of these guys of course teenagers uh even though uh, palanetto and lamps have both been in the fifa community now for multiple years and have a lot of competitive history lamps with being of course a, a rookie in emls this year uh and then palanetto kind of being household coming into season three but no wins we should say he has not won any emls event yet Maybe this is the time, Mike LaBelle. Maybe this is the time, and we'll see who hits your wagon to as well, because it is time mm -hmm. for our pre-match predictions. We mm -hmm. all get a chance to predict the winner and the chat. You can also do the same thing by voting in our sports buff extension on screen. All right, let's bring in again our Zwayback HD, who's watching along on his He's gonna be better right off now. after Zway. this game. He's going to be beating me. That. <laughs> Already a better record than four of the five of us, man. You're one no. <laughs> That's unbelievably embarrassing for everybody but me and you. Congratulations on making the right choice. Hey, appreciate it, guys. The only the only person I'm trying to beat here is Mike. As long as that happens, I'm happy. I don't care what Easy. place I come in on. So yeah. yeah. All right, we'll go to you to last a great again. Start right now. You're doing wonderful. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> we'll go to you last again, Zway. So let's start with Mike this time around. Uh, we started with you last yeah. time because we knew where you would go. That's I'm okay. Interested. I don't mind. I'll lead off. I'll set the tempo and the tone. I'm good with it. No, okay? no, it's just Tell whatever, whatever, dude. not to whatever, pick dude. after this, bro. That's I it. I know. I got you. I, I, I understand the, the premise here. I get the game plan. We're on the same page. I got it. <laughs> Palanetto told me, Mike, please do not choose me. Every time you go against me, I get a win. So I'm, I'm going to go for Lamps in this. Palanetto will probably be happy about me not taking Lamps. I just think <laughs> Lamps is holding something on his shoulder right now. 
You know, he's, he's definitely feeling a certain type of way. I know he was unhappy with his initial performance in League Series 1, and he's going to have a rebuttal here. He's going to enjoy this revenge matchup and move into the final. And I'll probably get a tweet. Right, from Pal- I'll get a DM from Palinetto if he wins saying, yeah, thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Yeah. The beauty of uh, me being the host here is I can change things up. So, Zway, we're actually going to go with you to make your pick next. Mm. All right, I'm gonna go. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Lamps on this one, right? For, uh, rookie Ooh. season uh, in EMLS has something to prove, and for once in my life, I agree with Mike on something. So this is groundbreaking territory. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Very Lamps uh-huh. as well. If we die, we die together. Kind of mentality. I get it, and I appreciate that as well. <laughs> Susanna, you're up. I'm a mess right now, Faisal. I literally <laughs> like. I, I don't. I, I don't trust my I know. instincts. Like, I know. It's like. I thought I knew for sure who I was going to go for in this one. And now I'm just, I'm uh, literally all over the place. <laughs> um, okay. Hearing a lot of pump you gonna make a over choice? there. No, my, <laughs> you gonna, my, you gonna make a my, pick my, or? Like in my heart, I was like, well, it's Paolo Neto. Cause I, I actually think like he could win the whole thing, but I have been so wrong. I've just been so wrong. So you don't so think Lamps like, could win I the go, whole thing is what you're saying. Do my Damn. gut now? Mm. Like, Damn. what do I do? No, I'm going to go so Paolo deep. Neto. Wow. Okay. <laughs> After all that. After all that. Okay. Okay. The I'm chat is pretty split as well, by the way. 5347 in favor of the ATL man. Dan, do you want to throw to me again? Because no, that no, didn't no, work no, out no, for no, you no. very well last no, time. I know, you can I make know your choice I, this time, big guy. I know who I want here. I know who I want here. Right, I think that, right. you know, you've all got your allegiances. You've all got your teams you support or where you're from. I've only been to one MLS game. And it was Atlanta. I watched them. I sat in the home end. So I'm going to go for Paolo Neto. I think he's going to win this one outside of any bias of the fact I've been to a game. I had him to win the whole tournament ever since the start of this one. So I'm going to be behind. Do we have proof of that somewhere? Is that documented? It was a conversation we had. The producers (laughs) know it. We talked about this. We know. I just want to know. I just want to know. I can't remember. We're just saying things now. We're just saying things. Yeah, if you pay attention when we rehearse, you'd know this was a thing, Mike Lavelle. You know this was real. We know that's Dan a real roll, thing. Roll, roll right. the clip. Netto, Find man. the clip. <laughs> roll the clip. Simple. This guy, th- uh, yeah. this guy thinks it's a TV production here. Chill, bro. Listen, okay. It comes out to me to split the difference here. I like both players. I really, really do. But I- I'm leaning towards Lamps as well. It feels like when you take down a gold machine, when you <sighs> dethrone a champion, you are on a mission. You've got something to prove and another height that you want to reach. So I'm going to stick with him. And I know he's feeling himself right now, too, because he packed Team of the Year Mbappe yesterday. I saw it. He is happy. He's excited. He's ready to just play FIFA and play to the best of his abilities. So this is our prediction. Three of us going for Lamps, two for Paolo Neto. Chat, again, is pretty split. 53 to 47. Zway, we appreciate you. You've been uh, perfect so far today. I don't know if the mic <laughs> curse is going to break that or the mm, hitching listen. your wagon with me is going to keep you perfect. So we'll see listen, right you now. you break my curse, Zway. Break Guys, my listen, curse. listen, listen, listen. The <laughs> only thing that matters right now is that we remember that Mike said he was going to shave his head if Dulce didn't go all the way. So are we it's holding true. him to that? That is documented. <laughs> Mike, we want to see that. We want to see that. We want that clip. We want Instagram. I think we want TikTok. No, 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 no. I think Zway was over to talk about losing eyebrows and stuff. I need to see. Bring that in. Bring that back. I'm 100% right now, dude, so... Mike, Mm -hmm. Mike, he has 50% of the wins that you've had so far (laughs) in one game. You can't say a single Uh, thing. I love it. I love that so much. I really do. More of that. More of that, We appreciate you, man. Exactly. We're going to check in with you before... Before the final, brother, thank you very much. All right, everybody in the chat, send us your comments. We'll try to feature them in the match. Maybe Dan and Mike will give you a shout out because uh, they're very nice guys. Guys, the last semifinal, one spot left, two players to decide it. Dan, take it away with the call. Thank you so much, Faisal. Another semifinal. And Mike, if you do see any comments in the chat, please read them out because my eyes, mm. they don't go that far. I've got like three screens. And I'm going to be honest, to see the Twitch chat, I have to turn almost a 180 angle and I'm so focused on the action right now. It's difficult for me to do. And there's going to be a lot of action on our screens right now. Lamps versus Paolo Neto. I mean, this could be a final. We always knew that this side of the bracket was terrifying and whoever got into the semis, it was going to be a mammoth matchup. Paolo Neto has been in a final before. He did it two weeks ago, but he wasn't able to go uh, one step further and be the champion. Maybe this time he can do it, but first he has to get past the up and Comer, the, the rookie, the newbie, whatever you want to call him, Lamps is on a tear at the moment, and he will very much try and be a blockade here, Mike. No doubt about it. And I said earlier on the broadcast 
household names, but what I really should have said is these are two players that we expect to see in the semifinals or in the finals uh, every, every single tournament. They're guys that go for late runs. Not saying that that hasn't been the case with Duelsto or Ex Verde, but they didn't have uh, the same prereqs to a certain degree, uh, at least not in EMLS recently, especially if we're looking at Duelsta, where, of course, that initial year he went crazy, or the following year he went crazy. And then the, the, the following couple years he made the broadcast, but never really had that that feel as if he was going to make the final run. Uh, whereas both these guys are in form, and we, we've kind of built it as saying they could win it. Uh, I mean, even if we look at League Series 1, every single game, Goal, Goal Machine 1 was in extra time. That's how close everything is, which is why my predictions have been so bad, is because every game is kind of a toss-up. I'm just saying. Excuses, excuses, but I'll take some of those as well. And maybe Pato and Mbappe can take a goal here for Paolo Neto in Atlanta. It's in the early stages, Lamps had possession, gave it away, but Paolo Neto able to wrestle it back and trying to take advantage of a little bit of space here. Fizzes one in, Mbappe gets hold of it, but Fofana is there. The defensive tank that he always is from midfield. Both Minnesota and Atlanta would love to get to the grand final, I'm sure, and it's Austin FC and Ex Verde waiting in that grand final. And even though it's very easy for us to say, you know, Lamps or Paolo Neto would be the favorite going into it, Ex Verde's been the underdog in every single game he's played so far, and he's always come out on top, so that's something to bear in mind for both of these competitors once they get there. Whoever gets there is not going to be an easy task. Here is Lamps trying to come forward and grab a goal, but not able to do it just yet. I mean, I expect to see a lot of adjusting between both of these players, just depending how the action kind of unfolds in, in terms of what are we going to shift from a tactical approach, formations, uh, just in general, trying to disrupt and manipulate the game flow, which is something that's so important in FIFA. I can't stress it enough how if you control rhythm or if you're offsetting someone's rhythm, it just gives you such a competitive advantage. Palmetto stopping Lamps in his tracks in yet another attack. Lamps trying to quickly put together a counter-attack to catch Palanetto off guard, and maybe he'll do the same again. Wins the ball back in a very dangerous area in the middle of the pitch where the strikers are making those runs. Here's Mbappe, R9 through the middle. Can he find the pass? There's one more to the left. We'll get to Pozuelo! And it's a great save Ooh. from Donnarumma. Again, proving his weight in goal. And that's something that we haven't talked about. Pozuelo actually taking the shot, going to become the finisher here. It's not because he's not capable. It's just often in those positions, we've seen competitors time and time again look for that final pass, that extra layoff. And when you're coming up from that center mid roll, most of the time you'll be shooting from outside the box. So they're almost always looking for that drop off or that dump off pass. Lamps, still all square. He'll be thanking. He would have been thanking Pozuelo if he had got that goal. Paolo Neto will be thanking Donnarumma. And now Paolo Neto trying to break through with Kylian and Bakpe, but. Lamps defensively seems to have matched up pretty well. He's always watching those passes, always cutting those passing lanes successfully. Suelo, player who almost managed to get that goal for Lamps. Now dropping back and doing his defensive work as well. He's there waiting in the middle. And look, Alvineto just not able to break through right now. Still relatively early, but if you think of Lamps' first leg against uh, Goal Machine, uh, I said it then. And I'll stand by it. If he plays like that, I don't think anyone's beating him. Between just the cadence, the composure, the skills, the intricacy, the defensive play. Here's Neymar! And there's the goal as well for Lamps. We can talk about intricacy, we can talk about defensive play. But it's about grabbing that goal when it's presented to you. Yesterday when Lamps was against Goal Machine, after each goal he would just say to himself, I'm so good at this game. And I tell you what, in front of goal, he is deadly. I might not be getting predictions right, but I swear I'm signaling actions all day, every day within these matches. They hear me talking. But yeah, if we see that package again from Lamps, he should go into the second leg with an advantage, and it's a matter if we can see it out, because I will say it was a tale of two legs. Uh, if you're thinking back from yesterday, again, Goal Machine looked much better than Lamps in that second leg, and it ended up being 4-3, a very close affair between both of these players. Or both of those players. Yes doing well to latch onto that one, not allowing Mbappe to steam through. Just as a reminder, the score yesterday, Lamps beat Goal Machine 4-3, but he went 4-0 up. So we will keep that in mind. He did let it slip ever so slightly, and he knows that in leg number two. But in the first leg, he started well. Managed to grab that first goal with Neymar, and maybe looking to try and double it up here. The goal scorer, Brazilian 
superstar. Managing to get past one, but can't get past the second. Oh, does win it back, though, Mbappe. Into our nine, and oh, so close. But Donnarumma might have had it covered. And that's where you question, if that was time green, does that hit the back of the net? Because we just saw Ex Verde convert multiple volleys. Very similar positions, but it was time green. And that's an extra little bit of bonus that you could say the what if, maybe, oh, I should have done this. A lot of people ask, is it worth learning or mastering time finishing? And the answer, the simple answer at least is yes, especially in FIFA 22. It gives you a little extra oomph or it gives you better accuracy on all sorts of different shots that you're selecting. Whether it's the chip, it's the finesse shot, it's the power shot, near post, far post, you name it. Marquinhos gets up, wins the ball back for Lamps, and now he'll be launching that counter-attack, and Mbappe oh, oh. is having a foot race here with Duncan. Duncan's pretty quick, but is he as quick as Mbappe? And there's the time green, but Donnarumma and a little bit of goalkeeper movement, making sure that Paolo Neto's still only a goal down, but from the corner, still a chance for Lamps to try and double his lead here before half-time. Neymar. All the way back to the defence, recycling play got to be said Dan he has to do better there way too much time favorable matchup Mbappe versus Duncan beats Duncan with ease a little bit of a goalkeeper shimmy but just walk that into the back of the net make sure you hit it green play the game cat and mouse look up slot it home Will Lamps be thinking about that one a little bit later if Paolo Neto gets back into the game one last chance before halftime then Lamps has tactically been Holding on to the ball here, and Mbappe feeds one into our nine. Marquinhos with a heck of a challenge. Neto quickly trying to get the ball back at the other end, but he presents another opportunity to Lamzir, who should score. Surely Neymar oh. gets past the keeper, goes back, and somehow oh. runs away. What a goal. It looked like it wasn't going to happen, but great composure from Lamps. He should have shot three times before that, but man, does that end up looking pretty. That'll be there for the recaps, the highlights, beat the goalkeeper once, beat him twice, the extra pass, hit the volley, cross the body, 45th minute. Oh, man, Lamps having another one of those first legs uh, of these matchups where he just looks unstoppable. What didn't he do better? His possession play, 65%. The shots, the, the, the goals that he was able to convert, the build-up play. We didn't even notice that Palonetto was on the, uh, the pitch. He didn't have any chances. Look at this. Here we go again. Take it around. A little bit of a cancellation. Swings it back to Ronaldo. It's just easy on the eyes. There's no other way to say it. And maybe you should have shot earlier, but what do I know? He converts it. He's up 2-0. And I'll take all the little extra side steps and the left analog work, which is something that's been really impressive from Lamps, is the mastery of the basics while he's able to combine some of these additional intricate details that allow you to be a little more expressive. Well, 45 minutes gone, and I think you said right, Paolo Neto not really been much of a factor in this game. No shots yet. Hasn't been looking very threatening at all. Needs to find a way to at least generate some chances and put Lamps under some pressure. Fofana. Having a little scrap in the middle with the opposition's Fofana, but here's Neymar. Ball roll and then scoop. Gets past Duncan and Mbappe. Latches onto it, but... The pass doesn't actually do anything, and Lamps has been really good at denying these opportunities for Paolo Neto. And we're giving Lamps so much credit on the defensive end because Paolo Neto is also one of the best attackers in all of EMLS. So we're not dealing with someone who wins games off their defense. It's always a factor, of course. Paolo Neto scores goals, and he scores goals often. We've seen Paolo Neto provide some very high-scoring games indeed. Oh, Mbappe forced off the ball. Again, a reminder, we've not seen a penalty so far this series of EMLS, or Series 1, may I add. Ronaldo will fire one home, oh. don't need a penalty. Instead, just stick one in from there. Ruthless from Lamps, just ruthless. Breaks it up in the middle of the pitch, two passes, smashes it on the near post, extends his lead 3-0. Both Susanna and I absolutely reeling right now. Stuck with Atlanta as we did previously in Series 1. Somehow, Faisal just seems to be getting all of these predictions spot on. It's painful, but at the same time, it is slightly impressive. Almost as impressive as this performance from Lamps. And now, it's just a bit of keeping the ball. Frustrate Paolo Neto even, even more here. Bring his players out of position. 
And they look to take advantage of the space that they provide once they do fall out of position. And this is tricky because this is similar to when Lamps played goal machine. He got the goal so early. It, it, you don't want to go into full-on possession mode. You still need to move the ball forward. You don't want to slow the, the actual game plan down too much because you've been so effective both offensively and defensively. Yeah, you want to kill that game off. At 3-0, it's not over by any right. Even at 4-0, it wasn't quite over, it would seem, when he played against Goal Machine, but he just about managed to scrape through. R9 denied once more by Lamps, and now he'll go for that counter, and the over-the-top oh. through ball will find Ronaldo. Touches it down, puts it onto his right foot, but Fofana comes back just oh. to at least delay the inevitable, it would seem. As the ball goes out, we'll get a pause, and I think finally we might see Palanetta make some changes here. It's again just with the, the footwork, and he's done such a wonderful job of neutralizing or just negating, nullifying what we are used to seeing from Palanetto. Big mistake, that's uncharacteristic for Fauna. Again, two passes for Naldo, five star weak foot, smashes it on the near post, and he's up 3 0. And the reason I was stressing, you don't want to go too defensive too early. He's got an entire additional leg to play. And Palonetto really hasn't had a lot of hope at this point. So you want to keep moving forward while the going is good or the going is great or whatever the saying is, you just want to keep offloading or <laughs> unloading as you're going forward. You don't want to stop that. When everything's clicking, you keep going. Keep changing channels then. Oh, almost straight off the rip. Lamb's able to find a fourth nearly from the corner, still pressuring. Still looking to try and pummel Palonetto into the ground. I think the going gets tough is the uh, expression you were looking for. That's what I was way. going for. I was, I was yeah, going to move cool. towards an idiom we all should understand. Uh, yeah. If it's not broke, don't fix it. I got that one right, I think. If it isn't broke, at this broke, point, it, 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 I don't it, even it's know close. anymore the way you say things. But here is Paolo Neto. Still not able to get a shot away yet, Mike, and that's what scares me a little bit. Maybe, though, this could be the start of a comeback. Surely you get the shot away, but there is Vinicius oh. Jr. And the highs and lows of that player. How consistent has it been? And I, I said it before we even got into gameplay where I love everything about Vinicius Jr. this year outside of his finishing. It has been so difficult for me to have consistent finishing with Vinicius, and we've seen it amongst all the competitors. Palonetto does win the ball back with the high press. Davies. Ronaldo trying to work his way into Mbappe, but Lamps has been so good at just pressuring in the right areas. And I think Palonetto is going to be so frustrated he wasn't able to score with Vinicius. If that was Mbappe, if that was R9, if that was Shinola, that's going in. Anyone else, anyone else in the attack, even Pozuelo is going to convert that because he has that five-star weak foot again. He'll be able to step into that space. I, I find him more clinical than Vinicius. Vinicius is just such a toss-up for me. If Lamps can make this fall, that would be heartbreaking. Oh. It's a great effort in the wall. Vinicius almost on the other side, able to tuck that one away. That really would have been rubbing salt in the wounds. And a bit ambitious from that angle. I'm not mad at it, but you got very fine detail, especially on Vinicius' weak foot again. Good challenge from Paolo Neto. He has to make sure he goes in at least to this second leg, only three goals behind. Now, it very much is a game of two halves or two legs in this instance, and we have seen games change drastically from one leg to another, and players, their play styles change as well. But at four goals down, you feel like it might just be a little bit too much for Atlanta and Paolo Neto. Has to hold on. One goal back would be good, but oh. it's almost a fourth there for Lamps. He's really piling on the pressure. And I agree with Twitch chat. Lamps the GOAT at the moment. He does look like one of the greats. Here's Fofana. Denied them. And we talked a little bit about how impressed we were as maybe the big surprise player being Nathan. Uh, in League Series 1. Well, in League Series 2, for me, it's been Fofana. This guy has been a pure tank on Q as per usual. Gets the breakup. He's a brick wall. I'm calling him the plumber. Oh, that's on side. Somehow. Oh, and what a save that is. What is Lamps he doing? again looks to the He's heavens. He's got to score that. Oh, you have to score that. An opportunity that goes absolutely begging. Paolo Neto will be counting his lucky stars to the fact he's only down by three it could have been four could have been five if i'm honest lamps maybe with one more chance though to try and make it four david Ginola off his back still holds on to it pato 
Mm. Into Pato. Fafana will find Vinicius Jr. Into our nine, and there's four. Finally, Lambs gets that goal that he's been searching for for quite some time. And a goal in the 45th, a goal in the 90th. Game management 101. And he's had every component, just every factor or fundamental. If we're making a FIFA concoction, he's not missing any of the ingredients. This man is a chef. Can we call him Chef Lamps? Lamps the chef. I don't know whichever free flow is better. But it's a it's a perfect first leg. What, what would you change in that? Better possession, better control, better skills, over the top through balls, deep passes, deep releases, extra buildup, intricacy, slowing the game down, spe speeding the game up, out wide, back to the central, ticky taka, holding possession. What do you want? This man had every defensively. Sound would be an understatement. Palinetto, we didn't talk about him at all. I don't know if he had a shot on target. Dan, correct me at any moment. No, I think you're right. Unbelievable. Alonetto wasn't really a factor in that one. And Lamps and Minnesota, they find themselves 4-0 up. Almost an exact replica of what we saw in the quarterfinals yesterday. Faisal, what worries me is Goal Machine got his way back into that quarterfinal, but Paolo Neto yeah. hasn't demonstrated much to suggest he yes. has the capabilities to do so in this matchup. That's the difference to me in this one, Dan. Lamps was in control from start to finish. We knew Go Machine was going to push. We knew Go Machine was going to get his in the course over the course of the matchup, certainly over the course of two legs. Lamps should have had eight goals in that game there. Mm. And mm. that's probably being a little bit conservative. We saw what Paolo Neto did in semifinal action in League Series 1. It feels like he got it reversed on him in this one. There is another late game, another leg, Mike, and we'll look through some of these goals. And I've got some specifics about goal two and goal three I want to talk about. But you know, it, it's not it's even like brilliant. he started. It's brilliant. I... Yeah. It, it, look at this. Like, that is clinical, right? We've seen goals like that, Mike. Okay, so that, I get it, right? You pass it to the guy inside, you make another pass, you turn. Look at this, though. Off a mistake, right at the end of the mm. half when he thought there was no chance left. The ball roll, okay, I'm like, all hope is lost. Nope. Oh, Just man. calm, cool, and collective. And the, the best part of that is, Faisal, is after he kind of makes the mistake of no ball roll, you see a cancellation on that fake shot, which allows him to resurface, and the defender gets caught out. You see Fufana again. I told you, most impressed player, or impressive oh. player that I've seen uh, the touch to, pass this there, entire Mike. week. Oh. He, he, breaks, he breaks up everything. And yeah. some of these goals don't do justice to the additional buildup. Because that's I where agree. it's so impressive with, with Lamps. It, uh, it, when he swings the ball, when he switches the pitch, when Ooh. he looks for the pass, you see the volley, the oh, setup. Man. Of course, green, time finish, R9. We have seen that goal before, but he's just got this combination play right now going between having all the staples, which you have to have. We're talking about playing triangles, playing simple, keeping the game as what it is, and then also adding in different moments of ingenuity or orchestrating uh, different attacks, and you're saying, whoa, I didn't see that coming. I didn't think he would yeah. resurface. I didn't think he would recycle. I didn't think we would have this cancellation. And you just have to give so much credit. And the, and the best part is we build up all the offense. The guy defensively, we have not seen a yeah. performance it's like so this. good. So good. So good. That, that was like, a very Where do I have the compliment? I, Where's the superlative? I, I, I Insert anything <laughs> you like right now. It's unbelievable. I, I'd say uh, on balance between League Series 1 and League Series 2, that was the most complete single leg of a game I've seen a player play so far. And uh, there's still another one to go. Let's check in with Susanna to get a gauge what the players are going through right now. Well, I was just holding this up. I, I think this feels appropriate for the way that Lamps is playing right now. This is uh, a Dan Gaskin specialty. Slobber knocker. <laughs> it has been a slobber knocker. And uh, for Paolo Neto, his coach with a, a dose of uh, tough love, because he basically said, that's the worst that you've ever played. But... If you can play the best that you've ever played in leg two, then you can still win this thing. But he needs to get back to doing the things that he's good at. He said he hasn't seen enough finesse play. He hasn't seen enough attacking pressure on Lamps. And Lamps has been basically taking advantage of every single mistake that Paolo Neto has made. Uh, but really, um, you can tell that Paolo Neto is just a little bit shook. The nerves have gotten to him. Um, but if he can go back to basics, again, just go back to what he is good at, what got him here in the first place, hopefully he can make a run and have a successful second leg here, Basil. All right, we, we know, Susanna, and thank you for that. We know he's got goals in his bag as well. So I'd be 
uh, a fool to, to count him out just yet. All right, I just want to remind everybody, we got a contest. If you're watching on Twitch where you could win a custom MLS jersey, MLS store gift cards, and there are 120,000 FIFA points up for grabs. To be eligible, you got to sign in and then link your account with the Sport Buff extension. I'll say it again. You have to link your account to the Sport Buff extension to qualify. To do that, linking your account, click the leaderboard. Then in settings, you can link your Twitch account. At the end of the show, the top 10 on the leaderboard, you're going to receive a whisper on Twitch to claim your prize. Restrictions do apply. You can see the panel below for the contest rules. All right. Dan got to some of your comps. Lamps the Goat was what the chat was saying. Send some more during leg number two. We'll try to get to as many as we can. Dan and Mike, last semifinal leg starts now. Well, the inside word, Mike LaBelle, is that Palinetta's coach said all you need is two first half goals and you are back in this tie. And I would agree, two first half goals would get you back in this tie. But firstly, need some shots on target. Palinetto just wasn't able to break through the defense of Lamp. Something has to change going into leg number two here. Um, no, but no doubt about it. I, I mean, I, I think Susanna was trying to be optimistic. But if we see that type of performance from Lamps, I'm not sure who's going to beat him. And that's no disrespect to any of uh, the, the opponents. It's just such a balanced package. And then defensively, he's not making any mistakes. And if you're not making mistakes defensively and then you have these offensive attributes, you've got this, 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 this problem. Uh, it's kind of like what Faisal said. He was saying maybe eight goals were possible. That's wild. It reminds me a little bit when we saw in League Series 1 the just pure dominance from Palinetto when he played King CJ. 11-0. We could have never predicted that. In fact, I'm still baffled that that happened. But it was one of those matchups or one of those games or, or whatever it may have been. Palinetto was untouchable. Well, Palinetto needs to dig deep and find an element of that Palinetto we saw just two weeks ago. Of course, there has been a major title update, which has changed the game quite significantly. And here is R9, a chance to make it five for Lamps, and it's saved. And what a chance that is to kill this game off so early on in the second leg for Lamps, just not able to convert it. If there's one critique, that's what's got to be. He's had now three 1v1s, no one around him. And all three of them, he messed them up in some way or another, trying to take it around the goalkeeper, shooting a little too early, shooting a little too late. Maybe there's too much time. He's spoiled for choice. Here's Neymar for Paolo Neto. Can we finally see the shot on goal? Oh. And we see it converted as well. That's the first little thing we need to see from Paolo Neto. Just a glimmer of hope. And certainly, the seed of doubt will be planted into the rain now of Lamps, of what if there is a comeback. Palanetto's coach, very excited from what I'm hearing. It's more than a glimmer. When you score in the first 10 minutes, I know there's three goals, I understand. But if you, if the goal was to get two and a half, you're in a great position to potentially make that happen, especially considering that he does not concede with a breakaway where no one was near him. And that starts to weigh on you again mentally. Lamps, though, still has a three-goal lead. And remember, it's Ex Verde waiting in the final for either of these competitors. If it was to stay how it is, it'd be eighth and seventh seed in that final. Paolo Neto look, trying to change that. The referee's going to give the foul, so Lamps regains possession. It really has been the underdog story throughout EMLS Series 2. And Lamps wasn't the underdog when it came to predictions, though. Three out of the five and Twitch chat suggesting that Lamps was going to be taking this one. And for good measure, he has played so fantastically so far. Just needs to try and kill this game off, I feel. Here is Pato for Fana. Neymar, quick passing, quick fire passing, but eventually Palanetto denies it. And that's become something new in the meta as well, where you have an early roulette and you change direction with the left analog stick. Uh, I don't feel that it was nearly as effective Oh, what a challenge! And what a block that is from Lawrence. That could have been two. That could have been the two goals that he needed. But Paolo Neto in the ascendancy right now. No doubt about it. A very different Paolo Neto. And also his defensive approach. Bang! Oh, almost a chance for R9. Donnarumma makes the save. Paolo Neto is piling on the pressure at the moment. Donnarumma will punch that one away. 
And when he goes as far as the wing, still possession now for Atlanta. A lot of light blue jerseys of Minnesota in his way. There's the pass though, Nathan. That's not who you want to be shooting. And it's just to find one more to Pozuelo into our nine. Oh. Does get the shot oh. away, collides with the woodwork. And Paolo Neto comes so close to grabbing a second goal. Strap in, we're going to have a different game. Leg two is feeling way different in terms of the energy, the defensive approach as well from Palonetto. A lot more aggressive. He had to be aggressive, but in the in the first game in particular, he was way too passive defensively, and it allowed Lamps really to build out, build up, excuse me, without too much pressure, uh, and kind of to get into his own flow. Well, Lamps regaining possession and just tiptoeing forward here. Mbappe is dangerously close to being offside there because of the offside trap, but still. Able to keep the ball. That time will be offside, and there's Paolo Neto just trying to take the initiative, trying to be proactive by hitting that offside trap, applying extra pressure here to Lamps. Now it's his turn to try and knock on the door once more. He is very firmly knocking on the door at the moment. He's like an annoying neighbor who wants their lawnmower back. Lamps, he doesn't want to provide it. Here comes Paolo Neto, Pozuelo. Fofana, Neymar into our nine turns oh. one, but can't turn the second. And the build-up now, uh, there's much more activity with the bodies. Uh, granted, he's committing a lot more bodies forward when we look at Palonetto's attack, but it's still impressive that you're seeing a lot more decisive play. Uh, he's definitely still focused in this game. He has not lost the the uh, the hope, so to speak. Uh, oh. Oh. You can just see a transition of energy, and by no means does that mean that Lamps is not in the driving seat, but it just looks like Palanetto came to compete now. In the first game, there wasn't anything for us to talk about, similar to his coach saying, well, you couldn't have played worse. Going into the next leg, we're only gonna play better from here. It was just so uncharacteristic, Dan. Duncan draws the foul, and that one's gonna be dinked into the box for foul. against one head, and oh, Lawrence was there. Anywhere else, and that's probably going in. However, Donnarumma again making a big, big save to make sure that there's not going to be a big comeback with the ball giving away a sloppy kick. But Lamps wrestles it back, so he's doing at least his due diligence by checking up on that one. And back for Lamps in Minnesota. Beats one, finds R9, gets the shot, and there's the fifth oh. goal. And boy, did Lamps need it. And that's the rebuttal that you hate if you're a Palanetto fan. That's the answer, I should say. It's back to a four-goal spread, four-goal deficit. And, and the reality is, and we've talked about this plenty, Dan, at some point, there's just not enough time on the clock. Even if you're playing amazing, you're creating opportunities to really be able to come back or build into a comeback. Oh, again, oh, the woodwork in Palanetto. It just looks oh. like it's not going to be his day. It could have been 5-3. Twice now, it's hit the upright. It could have been 4-3. Technically, maybe Lamps doesn't come down and score that goal then. <laughs> oh, pressure here. Nathan Jim. Marquinhos actually just about holding on to the ball. Paolo Neto again looking up to the heavens. Lamps will be shaking his head a little bit because he knows how scary that half was. But the fact of the matter is, he's four goals ahead going into the last 45, which is all he needs to focus on right now. Just hold off this attacking wave of Paolo Neto. He's looked different, but certainly will be frustrated he's not been able to convert those goals. I mean, part of it's just a little bit unlucky as well. Uh, he's in the right place, the right timing. Everything was perfect outside of the finish where you see the crossbar, you hit the post, it bounces back, you don't get a rebound. Here's some of that buildup again. Nathan in the attack in this case. Ugh. This is nothing that's going to help you there. And it, it feels as if in games where you need them, sometimes that's going to be a common thing that just happens. Uh, we always remember when we hit the post, but we never remember when the post helped us. Uh, yeah. Maybe there's the, the the recency biased in that or just positive. I don't know, but I, I played enough FIFA, I reviewed enough gameplay where I, I sit back and I watch some of my games and say, oh, I didn't realize I hit the post and then it bounced back to one of my players. You just feel like you earned it. You deserved it. But when it goes against you, that's all you have to talk about. Lambs will be thanking the post. But at the same time, he's done enough to warrant being four goals up. It could have been more. Lance has had one-on-ones. Could have scored them. Here's Neymar. Ronaldo twisting and turning in the box. Won't be able to beat Fofana. And you feel like Paolo Neto, he needs a goal very early in this second half to give him hope of coming back into this game. 
It's not impossible, but it's very unlikely, but that might be the start. Ooh. It was offside anyway, but it still hit the upright. It just might be one of those days at this point. I mean, we've, we've, like I said, commentated, discussed, analyzed so much FIFA, and, and sometimes that's a situation. And when you're trying to make a comeback like this, you need everything to be perfect. Everything has to align because it just typically doesn't happen. Oof, what a slide tag. All those stars have to align and you need to have luck on your side and Palinato definitely doesn't have that right now. And it's not like yeah, Lamps some is lucky to be in this position because he's not. We, he that's what I was going to say next. Half, right? That's what I was going to say next. You took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say, you could make an argument that Palinato has been unlucky. But then what do you say about this first leg where he's down four goals and we're talking about Lamps should probably be up more. Lamps could easily make the argument he was unlucky at times not to be a little bit further ahead. Here is R9 with plenty of space to work with. The goalkeeper movement was there to deny it. And oh my goodness, it's Messi! And it's not the Messi the player, it's mm -hmm. R9 the player. But what a messy situation it was. Lamps gets another and that might just be the final nail in the coffin for Paolo Neto. It's got to be. Uh, you see a little bit of a head shake from Lamps. I don't know if he's just a little upset with himself missing some finishes. Of course, gets the bounce back or the, the mistake uh, and is able to convert. His buildup has been very consistent. He goes for the big switch here. Doesn't have enough of that extra emphasis. But unfortunately, strange animation. First time R9 steps into a green time finish. You see the pause is cued, but there's just not enough time left. I don't like to be one of those people that's doubting what's possible or what's realistic. But at the same time, I look, I, I look at myself and say, I don't, I don't see it. How are you going to come back from a, a, a five-goal difference? Uh, and, and you're coming into the 55th minute. You're scoring a goal every five minutes or seven minutes or something along those lines. It's got to be. It's got. I'm not a math guy. We know this, but I, I just, just from a realistic approach, that's where you're going to be. Uh, and at that point, I think Palinetta's is just playing a little more for pride. Well, Lamps is on the verge of his first ever. EMLS final, of course, his rookie season in EMLS as well. Here's Mbappe, though, to try and get one back for Paolo Neto, but it's offside, doesn't matter. Lamps won't even worry about it. He knew it. Not even a muscle spasm. He said, don't worry about it, it's fine. I've got the five-goal lead. His competitor in that grand final is Ex Verde, another player who's never been in a final before in EMLS history. And he's watching on... And he knows it's going to be a difficult task. It was always going to be a difficult task, whoever he's facing. But Lamps is putting on an absolute display for us, putting on a clinic right now. 6-1 up after aggregate score. Palonetto has it all to do to try and make that miraculous comeback. I'm already starting to think of the final. Lamps versus X Verde. And I think of the interview as well that X Verde had when he was talking to Susanna and said that his matchup, at least in, in the regular season or in the qualifier matches, did not go well against Lamps. And you wonder if that's sitting with him a little bit too, saying, I really wish I would have played Palinetto as maybe a better matchup. Because there's so many different gameplay styles that go into how you express yourself in FIFA and how people actually match up. And if it's a bad matchup for you and it's a great one for someone else, it puts you in one of those positions saying, what do I have to shift? How do I change my gameplay? It was 7-0 in favor of Lamps when they faced it up against each other mm, in the qualifiers. There so you that go. Is a, yeah, I knew it was bad. I, I didn't have the yeah. result, but I, just the way, the way that he was talking to Susanna, it didn't sound like that's the matchup he wanted. Palonetto still can't find the back of the net. Vinicius putting it wide. And at this point, it's just a little bit of a victory lap for Lamps. His rookie season, he got to the quarterfinals in League Series 1. Taken down by Paolo Neto, may I add. But now he's gone one step further, and then two steps further. Gets to the grand final, and gets revenge onto Paolo Neto, and could oh, make it more here. The cancellation. Stop it, the Lamps. That goal is so difficult if you really look at the, the pieces of it. I hope we get to review it, or I hope we get another replay. I know that it doesn't change anything from the outcome perspective here. He's into more space. Uh, you have a break, and you basically are looking at a fake shot cancellation and then into a time finish where he hits the near post. So he shimmies and shakes the goalkeeper, beats the defender, forces a hesitation, and then green times the finish. It's just something most people do not have in their arsenal. 
Well, there's one back and a sheer consolation goal for Paolo Neto at this point. I think Mike touched on it. There's just not enough time on the clock. Even though 10 minutes are left, that does not equate to 10 real minutes, of course. And even if Paolo Neto was to have a flawless period for these next 10, realistically, you're only scoring two, maybe three at that point. So Lamps, he just wants to try and make the goal difference look a little bit better as he goes on into the grand final. Minnesota versus Austin FC is where we're going to be at. Seventh seed versus eighth seed in our grand final. And it really does show how closely competitive the EMLS is and has been, especially in Series 2. R9 finds a back bait. And just to get one more. And I'd love to try and paint the picture that the comeback is there. And even though it might be 3-3 in this leg, it's still 7-3 on aggregate. It really was Lamps getting the job done in leg number one with those four goals and putting Palonetto to the stakes. He set the tempo, he set the tone, and it also forced Palonetto to have to play differently, completely different actually, where he came out super aggressive. And something that I've noticed in FIFA 22 in particular, you can play with aggressive tactics temporarily with a lot of success, but it's difficult to do this for the long term. For a full match without having detriment, without having players getting tired and then that fatigue kicking in, without having some mistake, without having some bounces in behind or just too much space because it only takes a couple leak outs for your opposition and then you've conceded a couple goals. Even if those are the only mistakes that you had, it's just one of those scenarios and we talk about it constantly where if you start out and you're already in constant pressure or you're already man marking everywhere, you know that you're playing a, a major game of risk and reward and you're going for it early and you have to kind of kind of get those goals early because as the game goes on, if anything, you want to shift to be a little more defensive or a little more balanced. Well, Minnesota FC and Lamps find themselves in the grand final then. It was all said and done for quite some time in that second leg and Lamps knew it, we knew it and X Verde knew it. His competitor in the grand final watching on and he will be, I'm sure, relishing the opportunity to play in his first ever final, as will Lamps. For Paolo Neto, he falls in the semi-finals this time. It was a runner-up placement in Series 1, but can't go further than top four. Faisal, it was an amazing performance from Lamps. It surely was a masterclass from him. And maybe the most impressive thing about this, Mike got a prediction right. Mike hey. got a prediction right. Mike got a prediction right. Thanks. Congratulations. Appreciate that. And Thank congratulations you. to the eighth seed and the seventh seed for finding their way yeah. to a final. And, and Dan, I don't mean to hammer home this point for the 100th time over the course of this weekend, but we had a feeling something like this could happen when we saw the qualifying, when we saw how much changed from day one to day two and the final game of qualifying to where they stood going into League Series 2. Three points from top to bottom. In fact, three points from top to nine. Goal difference getting X Verde into the dance and now he's ready to take home the prize. The depth is just unbelievable, man. It's crazy. And I mean, Alan Avi came in first seed, but between first and eighth, there was such a minimal difference, really, that the seeding, it didn't paint the picture necessarily. All it did was give us our bracket and give us who was going to be playing each other in the quarterfinals, because you could argue that all eight of these players could have been first seed, and that's been proven right now. We've got a grand final with seventh and eighth seed going up against each other. Their first ever final as well in EMLS history. In Lamp's rookie season as well, to be able to achieve that is absolutely incredible. But now he just needs to go that one step further. And there were certainly some worrying things that happened during that game that is going to be you know, a little bit concerning, I think, for Minnesota and fans of Lamps, but I think he'll get the, you know, he'll get the, the whisper in his ear from his coach just to calm it down when he needs to. All right, well, maybe just doing that right now. We're going to take a quick break. Not a lot of time now to go between that match that just ended and the League Series 2 final that's about to begin. We are going to be right back. It's X Verde, it's Lamps, it's EMLS League Series 2 presented by Coca-Cola. It's so good to see you all. All right, let's brainstorm. Any ideas for...
Yes, welcome back to EMLS League Series 2 presented by Coca-Cola. That man in the final, X Verde. He is gonna take on Lamps for a League Series 2 title. Lamps destroying Paolo Neto in the semifinal, having his way, and now a win away from being crowned champion in his rookie MLS season. It is, of course, League Series 2 presented by Coca-Cola. We've had champions in the past. Of course, Duelsta 2019, Fiddle in 2020, Diddy Chris Lito last season. We already knew we were getting a new champ this time around when Lamps took out Gold Machine yesterday. And he and X Verde are left trying to add their name to this list and take home $8,000 as well. The winner will be crowned the second champion of the 2022 EMLS season. It is down to the final two, the eighth seed versus the seventh seed. But throw out the seedings when you get to this tournament. You just got to get a spot to play and anything can happen. I am Faisal Kamisa, joined by Dan Gaskin and Mike LaBelle. Dan, it's almost about that time. The final match is here. It's X Verde versus Lamps. Crazy. It is crazy. I mean, when you look at the right-hand side of the bracket, you said, all right, I could imagine any one of those four competitors getting to a grand final. On the left-hand side, it was more doubtful. I mean, especially with X Verde, with his performances, you know, against the rest of the field throughout the qualifications, he didn't beat any of them. And then suddenly he gets to tournament day, it's across two legs, and he turns into a different beast. You've got eighth seed versus seventh seed, but we throw it out the window. It's now first versus second seed in my eyes. Lamps has looked the stronger competitor as an all-round package, but Exverde offers something a little bit different, which is just this kind of shoot on sight, never say never approach, which just has worked so well for him um, in, the, in the game so far, far Mike. Up to this point, uh, I've been so impressed with Exverde, and I, I guess I, maybe I'm showing some tendency there. I'm, I'm, I'm foreshadowing a little bit. I don't know if anybody's going to beat Lamps if he's able to replicate what he's been able to put on display. Uh, that first leg against Gold Machine, then that first leg against Palonetto. He's won those entire matchups just off that first leg. Uh, and he really has been a, a, so impressive because of the balance between defense and offense. Uh, and that's something that we just constantly stress. And I, I don't know if you can see me on screen here, but I got the, the young goat emote. Yeah, uh, That's what his yes, name, name is. The little young goat action or emoji. What are these called? Emotes. I think it's Whatever you want to call it, bro. Um, I'm going with emote. I don't care. What's up, Faisal? I got the young goat emote, and I feel like that should be attached to a Lamps. And this is Lamps' final to lose. Um, I, I think he'd be very disappointed with himself if he if he threw it away going out of that right side of the bracket, which, as what Dan said, no disrespect anywhere, but you got a lot of players that you expect to see in finals, and then you've got a little more of the unexpected on the left side. We didn't know who was going to come out. We had Alan Avi, who was the number one seed. Ex Verde washed him, put in work. Uh, and then we, of course, saw Kibamito, uh, who's been a champion duel, so that's been a champion, but not as much in recent times. So we didn't know what was going to happen, but Ex Verde has earned it. He deserves it. And he's in the final going up against Lamps. This guy, this guy gets one prediction right. He starts bleep talking everybody else. All right, cool, man. Sorry. A reminder for everyone. My bad. If yeah. We've got a contest for those watching on Twitch <laughs> where you can win a custom MLS jersey. I love you, Mike. MLS store gift cards and 120,000 FIFA points as well to win. Participating questions from the Sport Buff extension to earn the points. You got to link your account to qualify. I've said it so many times. At the end of this match, the top 10 of the leaderboard, you're going to receive a whisper on Twitch to claim your prize. Restrictions do apply. You can see the panel below for the contest rules. All right, no messing around. It's time for the pre-match predictions. We all get a chance to predict the winner. You can as well in the chat by using the aforementioned Sports Buff extension on screen. Joining us again, hosting his own little party on his mm. feed. It's Zway back, mm. HD. Zway 2-0, and 2-0. Oh, oh. How you feel? I feel pretty good. Again, the theme is going to be pretty consistent here as long as I beat Mike. That's what I'm going for. Um, so, uh, what a crazy mm. game. Crazy, crazy, <laughs> crazy match. Yeah. Yeah. 2-0, uh, and oh, also the Canada-USA score. I just want to throw that up there. Okay. As well. Okay. okay. We'll, uh, we'll like leave that right. though for All now. Right. We'll All leave right. that right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll leave that. We'll leave that. We'll leave that. We'll leave that. So we're going to go that, to you Faisal. last. That was uncalled time. for. I did have to do that. I did. I'm on an island all by that. myself over here, big guy. All by myself. I had to let everybody know that's what's going down. All right. Dan Gaskin, you can go first this time. <laughs> um, You know what? You look thrilled, against... by the way. X Verde every single time, and I've gone against Lamps every single time, so this one's really <laughs> tough for me. 
<laughs> with a performance like I've just seen from Lamps, I have to go with Lamps and Minnesota here. Even though my brain's like, go for X Verde. That's the that's the off pick here. Has to be Lamps, surely. Okay, Susanna. <sighs> God, this is this is this has been a terrible day for me all around. The U.S. You've been so bad. Loses. You've been so bad. I am I got a big goose egg up there for. I th I mean, it's just awful. It's just. I awful. can catch Susanna. My... I can catch you to Susanna. You, I know. You I'm know. literally That's looking insane. at these records right now, and That's that is insane. how bad it has got. Like I was looking at Mike yesterday, being like, "Whoa, like that's bad." Now I am in the same. Category. Oh, thanks, Susanna. But now I you're know. right with me. I was. Yeah, come on I down. Was. I was. Welcome. Okay. No, we're gonna we're gonna turn it around right here, um, and it's gonna be lamps that does it for mm. me because. Like Dan said, based on that performance that we just watched, um, man, boy, he's on fire. Yeah. All Lamps. right. I'm, I'm going to go, go with Lamps as well. I had a feeling this guy would step up this tournament, uh, especially after taking down Gold Machine. So we'll go 3-0 there. Look, 73% of the chat saying Lamps right now as well. Mike, over to you, sir. What are you doing, dude? No <laughs> we pressure, got the young Michael. goat. My, uh, Mike one doesn't word like being called Michael, by the way. I, yeah, Michael doesn't I just think he he's got... Oh, well, well, sorry, uh, we're gonna Zway, call I didn't him Michael, to cut you off. Go for it. Yeah, no, I'll be Michael okay. if you like. Whatever you want, Zway. What, what, what makes you happy? <laughs> we can go back to Dirty Mike for you too. All right. Oh, man, so Dirty Michael is know. going Young Goat. <laughs> they, they, they don't know. Young Goat. They know. Lamps, one word, balance. I think that he just, he's got too much. He's got too much uh, on the defensive end and then, of course, being on the offensive side as well. All right, Zway. Much like Canada in World Cup qualifying, you are perfect so far today. What oh, do you have in terms of a prediction? All right, so I'm going to go against the grain here. Um, okay. While Lance's second match was obviously incredible, and he's got the momentum and all that, I was very impressed by X Verity's ability to answer Duelsta's goals time after time in that first uh, in that first leg. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to say and be the only person here um, that's going to vote X Verde. So I don't know. I'm two and zero. I don't know. Track record there speaks for itself. So let's see. <laughs> Mm. Amazing. Not mm. just a prediction, some analysis behind it as well. Hey, we appreciate you hanging like out it. here with us, Zway. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, and of course... It's been a pleasure. Yes, Mike, I love yes, you. It has. Michael, and of I course, love you. We... I love Michael? You <laughs> yeah, Michael, 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 Michael. <laughs> Are we going to do a handshake after this? I feel like we have to like handshake and hug that out, you know? I hope yeah, to see you something. soon. That's all I'm going to Don't make me come down to Miami. Soon. I'll visit you. Yeah, come down. You're yeah. always welcome. That invite didn't seem to extend You're part of like a romance right now the rest of you three. <laughs> Send us your best comments in the chat, and we will feature them in the match. It is time for the League Series 2 final. Leg one getting set to go. Dan and Michael, take it away. Oh. Final time then between Austin FC and Minnesota. X Verde versus Lamps. Seventh versus eighth seed. This is not what anyone would have predicted as a grand final. I don't care how good your predictions are. No one would have called this. And mainly because of that man on your screen, X Verde. He has gone against the grain every single time. He has been the underdog, but he has got the job done. Can he go that one step further? Can he be a champion of the EMLS League Series 2? Or are we going to see Lamps in his rookie season do what Gold Machine did also in Series 1 and lift a trophy in your first ever season in EMLS? Mike LaBelle, how are you seeing this one? Well, I feel a little guilty first off because I've gone against X Verde, similar to you, and I just didn't expect some of the results and his performances. I feel like I owe him an apology at this point, making to the final being able to battle back, having a lot of answers and rebuttals against Stoolsta, being very dominant against Alan Avi. Alan Avi was never in that matchup, never in that game. It wasn't even competitive. And now heading into the final, all the talk and all the hype has been around Lance because when he's played at his best, it's been so impressive. But Mike Tyson had a saying, and he said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. So if X Verde is able to maybe do some of the punching, maybe Lamp's plan doesn't go to plan. Uh, because we haven't seen this matchup since they matched up a long time ago, sort of, a few days ago. Not a long time ago. And it was a big spread there, but this is a different X Verde. He's not the same guy. A different X Verde, and we need to see the X Verde that we have seen consistently throughout this weekend. Not the X Verde that lost 7-0 to Lamps in qualifiers. X Verde is going to be kicking from left to right, whereas Lamps is going to be kicking from right to left. Of course, Austin versus Minnesota. 
in this grand final of EMLS League Series 2. And Exverde looking to try and start things hot here, but is instantly denied by Lamps. And the counter-attack is on. And Bapu is making a bursting run down the right-hand side. But the offside trap sprung. Stops him in his tracks, but now R9 instead will take the bat on. Out wide to Mbappe. Lamps looking to try and get an early goal, really to settle the pressure, but it's really doing very well to read everything he's doing. Still early. But it's hard to predict based on any of the previous results from X Verde because, as we said, going up against the top eight, everyone that had qualified for League Series 2, he didn't have a win versus any of them. And after he went on to defeat Alan Avi, I said, oh, I think anything might be possible here. Then he went on to beat Dulsta, and he had to battle back in that game too. He had to face adversity, which we hadn't necess necessarily seen either. So he's given you a little bit of everything, and he still has that unusual approach, that high-octane offense that we're talking about. Shots will be attempted. It's a little more unpredictable because most competitors are trying to work it in. Now, a lot of these players are always looking for that extra percentage, that extra ball, but... Just as we saw then, Ex Verde, when he sees any sort of opportunity to pull that trigger, you better believe that shot is going to be at least taken. And sometimes it'll be from distance, sometimes it'll be from close. It's about where it goes afterwards. Where's that bobble? Where's that rebound? Here's R9. Nice little roulette to try and get past Duncan. Doesn't work out. And it means now Ex Verde can look to launch a counter attack of his own. It's been end to end at the moment. There's a lot of space on that left hand side for R9. Hasn't found him just yet, though. Instead, we'll just hold on to the ball a little bit and reassess his options. A little bit of a feel out thus far. We haven't had that big breakthrough, that major move. Nothing has technically happened just yet. Trying to get that commentator curse, Dan. You know how I do it. You've done it so many times. I just, just start talking at the right moment, right? I'm setting it up. I'm, tell I'm telling the story. Either that or the wrong moment. It depends which way you want to look at it, really. But certainly, Fair. if you are watching on and you want a goal to happen, get Mike LaBelle to start talking about how there's not been any goals yet. Because every time he seems to focus on that, someone will strike through. And that Ooh. is a heck of a ball over the top to R9. Takes it down and needs a little bit of support. Does have support from Pato, but has to go all the way back to Duncan. And certainly, Lamps has been pressuring... Ex Verde so much to the point that Ex Verde doesn't feel like he can play that extra pass and go forward. But he's more than happy to play the possession game right now. Have a little bit of an assessment of what Lamps is trying to do defensively. That's a nice ball to Mbappe. R9, one more to Pesuelo. Oh. Back to R9. Oh. Does he get the shot away? Oh. Yes, he does. But unfortunately, it gets pulled back. I'd love to see that on a replay. Why? That seemed just... Ah, the tiki taka, the pass and move. I don't know about that offsides. Uh, it must have been a half step. It had to be very close uh, because that buildup was at a premium. Everything was there. Well, officials deciding it's not going to be fair play. It's going to be offside. And yeah, a replay would be good just to get a second look at it at some point. But for now, Lamps will be thankful that he's not a goal behind and instead will launch an attack of his own here Neymar in the middle having to try and get past Fofana which is never an easy task and then Nathan comes steaming in a defensive brick wall that has been very apparent throughout this entire weekend and Ex Verde now has possession once more seen a much different speed of the game as well uh, in some of the previous matchups especially for Ex Verde they've been a lot higher pressure, a lot faster moving, just higher tempo in general. And in this match, he's had to have a lot more build-up in order to get himself into some of those attacking uh, places on the, on the pitch. And that might be more credit, again, to Lamps being just so solid defensively that he's causing Ex Verde to have to take his time with the build-up before kind of speeding it up as you get into the final third. Zuelo will find that pass to Neymar. Croqueta inside. Not really the skill move it once was in its prime. It is funny how these skill moves go from being unstoppable in previous iterations of FIFA to then pretty dismal in later iterations. They just get nerfed into the ground. But usually the newer skill moves that are introduced into the game and the newer mechanics, they're the ones that are very powerful. Here's Mbappe now. 
does have support on the right-hand side, but opts to go back to Fofana. Does have a free kick if he wants to take it, but instead will just hold on to possession with Pozuelo. Arnold Mbappe trying to make those runs, trying to cut apart those defenders. It's messy at the back at the moment, but Arnold still somehow has it, and eventually Exverdi wrestles it off him. And out of all the games that we've seen today, this is the first one that's been real cagey from the beginning. It hasn't been nearly as fluid, and it just might be because it's the final. No one wants to be the first guy to make a mistake. The buildup is much slower for both competitors. It just seems to be a little more on the precise end with some of the, the, the structure. Uh, specifically with the build-up play, not necessarily when you get into that final third, but the build-up play is, is very risk-adverse. 45 minutes gone. No goals and not really any shots to scream or shout about. Ex Verde was able to pull the trigger a couple of times, but Lamps yet to actually have a shot. And I think that says a lot about the performance from Ex Verde, just keeping Lamps at bay and perhaps learned a lot previously from their encounter. Here's our nine that it touched Mbappe. <sighs> Is that why it, Is that that's what, why it was offside? I'm trying to figure out the scenario. Does it touch him? It can must can go, I get another replay? Run that back slower. What's going on? Does it even touch him though? Man, that's he tough. Clips the boot. That's tough. I was trying to figure it out because I swear the way he opened up the space, it was good to go. Wow. Ex Verde. A hair away from being able to be 1 0 up. Lamps. Maybe he could go 1 0 up. Donnarumma. Again, diving to his left with a strong hand, forcing it out for a corner. Lamps exploding into this second half now. Maybe not so happy with the pace of the game in the first 45. Play his own game. Play the same game we've seen Lamps be able to dominate all weekend long. Instead, though, Exverde wins possession back, and now he instead will look to try and play one over top, perhaps. Several players making that run. A lot of room on the left-hand side, which he can use and expose if he wants to. Here's Lawrence. Can he get the cross to the back post? Yes, he can, but the denied header means that Lamps just about holds on. And you're seeing both competitors being tested with some of the offense, too. They're trying to implement different oh. ways to score goals. Oh, Ooh. wow. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Wow, wow. Sign it, seal it, send it. What a goal that is. It. Jeez. Look at the footwork. You see the slight ball roll across the body, the first touches, the secondary touches, just all in one motion. Really slick, composed, and we have our opening goal, 55th minute. So Ex Verde, who could have been 1-0 up if it weren't for Mbappe, just ever so slightly touching the ball and making it count as an offside. I've never seen that happen, by the way. That is... One of those freak moments that Ex Verde will just be wondering how on earth Mbappe got in the way. But Lamps recovers, holds on, and then scores a goal like that to gain the lead. But Ex Verde, who constantly showed a response against Ulster earlier on today in the semi finals, has to show that same resilience here. Neymar tries to get a Ooh. shot away. Nathan denies. Fofana. Fofana on Fofana action. Now will allow Lamps to maybe play a through ball here to Mbappe, making the run being tracked by Ex Verde. But Mbappe still picks it up, still holds on to it as well. What good foot movement this is. And eventually is just fizzled out by Ex Verde. Now he instead could try and do something. There's the over the top through ball. Can Mbappe get ahead to it? So close with Donnarumma. He was fouled anyway. Not quite. And what you're seeing right now is both competitors are trying to isolate those matchups where you have Mbappe or you, you got R9. Can you create some sort of island? It just puts them in an advantageous role, especially for offensive players with this much, not only technical skill set, but just pure pace and power and, and this dynamic capability. We, we saw that first goal from Lamps. It was kind of created from nothing. It was a, a deep driven pass, a couple good touches, a beautiful skill, some slick footwork, but it was just a moment from R9 and he was able to convert. And that's been the separation. I have to give credit for Lamps to be able to be defending against Ex Verde so successfully, who has been very unpredictable so far in this tournament, and maybe can find a little bit of that magic here. Pazuelo gets hold of it, 
Donnarumma saves. Rebound goes to Pato. Ball still alive here for Ex Verde. Can he get a ball into the middle? Yes, he can. Mbappe, though, can't get hold of it. Fafana's there to defend. And Lamps holds on to this goal lead. Oof. Mbappe you can't now. tell me Fafana hasn't been everywhere, Dan. He is covering he, he all of the space in the midfield. Yeah, he, I mean, ever since his Player of the Month item came out, I thought that was a must-do, and that was a long time ago. I still think that item actually would match up pretty well even at this stage and then a better one arrived here's R9 gets hassled and jockeyed oh can't get that ball to Mbappe fourteen minutes left in this one and there's a well rake through ball oh, and the finish is divine you're not stopping that one Mbappe have a swing 2-0 and it starts from a big mistake in the middle of the pitch. They always tell you don't turn over possession there. Easy transition. You can split the center backs. Everybody's out of position. We might take a second glimpse of it. Again, the play's broken up. And when we're looking at competitive FIFA, a big decider uh, or a big separator is often the mistakes that are made. You see Fafana again broke up that play. Straight line through ball. Both defenders out of position. Mbappe another day in the office. And when you have additional time like that, you can also look up. You saw the goalkeeper move early. It was a relatively elementary finish uh, for, for someone as gifted and talented as Lamps. And maybe someone that's just in such good form. So this should be a big shifting point here to see if Xverde can get something by the end of the match. Because it just tells you I'm still focused. I'm still dialed in. The last 10 minutes will be really important to having a, a different feel or different momentum going into leg number two. And there is going to be another 90 minutes, remember. It's two legs here in this grand final. So even though just the 12 minutes left in leg number one, still another leg to arrive. And it has always been quite often a tale of two legs in a lot of these games. And Lamps doesn't have the 4-0 cushion that we've seen him hold in every single game on broadcast so far. Quarterfinals versus goal machine. He goes into leg number two. 4-0 up. Semi-finals versus Paolo Neto. He goes in 4-0 up. He's only 2-0 up at the moment. But I think he'll still be very happy to at least be holding the lead. Exverde beats the offside trap. Mbappe. Plenty of space to run into. But he's being hassled and jockeyed by the fullback. And he's just looking to try and make that pass into the middle. Does find it, but it's Pozuelo on the edge. Sanchez, though, is going to be a nuisance and steal the ball away. And you can see Lamps here sitting a little deeper and just looking for some of these outlets, really taking his time with the build-up. Oh, what a tackle that is, by the way. That could have very easily gone wayward. Would have allowed Lamps a chance to maybe get a third. Instead, Exverde has possession. And give it away, though. Duncan in the right place at the right time. Oh, he was open. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Lamps holds the final attack here. He's He's been pretty dominant, very controlled the whole way through, uh, and it makes the most sense to close it out with some game management make sure you get the last opportunity. Lamps will have that last chance, you'd imagine, unless he gives the ball away, but he shouldn't. Sanchez fires, won it? Vinicius Jr. Needs some assistance Ooh. in the middle. Won't get it, but he will get a 2-0 advantage going into leg number two. So if we take into account the qualifiers as well, that's 180 minutes of Lamps not conceding against Ex Verde. I know 90 minutes of those, of course, were in a leg one format, a little bit different, but 7-0 in the qualifiers, 2-0 now in leg number one of this grand final. Everything is pointing towards Lamps and Minnesota being the champions here of EMLS League Series 2. Faisal, I mean, Austin FC, and next Verde, they looked good all tournament long. Is Lamps that one step too far here? So far, it looks that way, guys. And again, like I I'd argue he should be up maybe a little bit more. This was a kind of slow game for him. It took him until the 54th minute to finally get his first goal. And if you're going to count first leg scores for him, he's up 10. He's got 10 first leg goals. Trying to make sure he does that work early and sets himself up for a good position in leg two. But Mike, when, when you look at some of those goals, and we'll get to the highlights right now, uh, just things of beauty. They really were. He, and he's got the total package. And just, he took some key 
moments here. Was able to convert on him. And I was going to say it was a very professional performance. I feel that Lamps is licensed to FIFA 22. There's this isolation again. Oh, the turn oh. one, not quite done. Ball oh, roll, get out of my man. house. The extra oh. touch, it, it's oh. just smooth. It's silky. It's composed. There's a certain stickiness to it even when he's building up, and that's meant in a complimentary way. And as I've been saying, Fofana's been the guy to watch, the big surprise player. That is straight line, straight edged. Split the center backs is how they teach you, and Mbappe just another day in the office. So good. So, so good, Mike. And uh, he, set, he sets himself up now, right? So how do you close out a game? It's a final. He's a young player. The nerves, I imagine, it doesn't look nervous. It doesn't look phased. How do you keep your mentals in check and close this one out? In my opinion, he has to change nothing. He's been sitting deep. He's been looking for yeah. these big outlets. He's had a lot of yeah. possession play. This is a fantastic tactic to see out a game. And in this case, he now has two goals to help him a little bit. He doesn't have to make a shift. Uh, and he's done such a good job in these first legs. I expect, of course, Ex Verde to come out and be much more aggressive. But if Lynch yeah. can keep hitting these counterattacks and finding the space, what's it going to change? Be efficient, knock out the game, close it out. I imagine uh, Ex Verde is going to look at the replay of that first offside goal that was given and zoom in to see that touch because I don't know, man. I didn't see it, but hey, the game is the game for a reason. Okay, I want to remind everybody we've got a contest. If you're watching on Twitch, you can win a custom MLS jersey, MLS store gift cards, and 120,000 FIFA points. All of that up for grabs. To be eligible, make sure you're signed in and link your account with the Sport Buff extension. You got to link your account to qualify. That'll be the last time I tell you. Now, to link your account, and I'll tell you this one more time, Click the leaderboard, click the settings, and link your Twitch account. At the end of this match, the top 10 on the leaderboard will receive a whisper on Twitch to claim their prize. Restrictions do apply. You got to be 18 or older and be a resident of either the U.S. or Canada, excluding Quebec. You can see the panel below for contest rules. Also, make sure you do not have block whispers from strangers turned on in your Twitch <laughs> settings. If you do, we can't whisper to you and give you said prize. Simple as that. Okay. Dan and Mike, hopefully our last virtual match of EMLS this season. Leg two, League Series two title on the line. Send us your best comments in the chat. We'll try to feature them if we can. It's time to get to our finale, Dan. Yeah, and everything is pointing towards Lamps in Minnesota, but Ex Verde and Austin FC will look to try and change that. But something just seems to be off for Ex Verde against Lamps. It was 7-0 in the qualifiers in favor of Lamps. It's 2-0 now after the first leg. It just seems like defensively, Lamps has the number of Ex Verde here. And Ex Verde needs to find a way to break through. And I don't know what that is, Mike. I don't know whether that's a tactical change, whether that's just a change of thought process. He came so close, of course, with the R9 attempt that was eventually called offside. So at least there's that for him to bank on and him to at least think back to. As we do kick off the second leg of the grand final of EMLS Series 2. I think it's, it's easier to be in our position, but it's kind of relatively straightforward for me in terms of the shift. Uh, what we didn't see from Ex Verde that he had in his previous matchups is he always had this organized havoc. A lot of pressure on the defensive end. He forced mistakes. He was very aggressive going forward. And in the, the previous leg, he was building up. He had a lot slower gameplay, which I feel played into the hand of Lamps. It was an advantage for Lamps to play at that speed, to be a little more structured. We always talk about Ex Verde and how he's got this unpredictable, high quantity, high octane offense. We didn't see that, and it wasn't just the defense from Lamps. It was really the speed and also the risk that was taken, or in this case, lack there uh, of on the defensive end. We didn't see the same pressure. Neymar for Lamps. You feel an early goal here would just do wonders for the confidence and the reassurance that Lamps will be looking for. And for Ex Verde, he's got to try and deny that. He's got to try and somehow deny this aggression and pace that Lamps is offering, but then also at the other end do some damage, and Mbappe is going to be offside. This time quite rightfully so. 10 minutes in, 80 minutes remaining, and that time does dwindle away very quickly if you are down by goals. This is going to be yet another offside. 
And even though that's offside, that's a little bit closer to what we've been expecting from X Verde. The way that he bursts through, he challenges a lot of 50-50s. And I, I just don't feel as if we saw that form of expression. Maybe because it's in a final, maybe there's some nerves. Maybe we just give a lot of credit to Lamps and, and what he was able to do on the defensive end. Uh, but he wasn't putting himself in those types of situations. And definitely not frequently enough. Alex Verde rescues the ball and wrestles back possession here. Nathan is... Unfortunately, too big to get around. Sometimes he's like a roundabout. You have to indicate left and try and get round him. I realize roundabouts don't exist in America, so that reference might That's get lost. That's not true. Not common, but they definitely exist. Oh, they exist? Okay, well, mm -hmm. I'm proven wrong. And I'm glad that you've adapted to the correct highway code. Pozuelo into Neymar and Donnarumma. Oh. Again, showing how important he's been between the sticks. Another so dip, I wouldn't, so mind. I wouldn't mind seeing that one again as well. I think there was slight goalkeeper movement, but it was definitely very slight. But it positioned Donnarumma in a favorable place for that, that shot attempt, of course, and it makes a difference. And at this level, we're always trying to find those small margins. Between two players who have been so impressive all weekend long, sometimes it will be those fine margins that make the difference. I mean, you look at the offside goal, or the, the non-offside goal, should I say, in the first leg, how close Ex Verde was to taking the lead in this tie and how different it could have been if that had come to fruition. Neymar finds R9 and oh, should be able to ball. strike it with his left, and he will do. And that's exactly what Ex Verde needed here. Austin FC grab one back. And you see the difference. You can feel the difference. Do you see the, have you noticed the lofted passes now? He's using that as a way to start his attacks. He's getting these centrally lofted passes that kick him down, and then you can go. Forward. Then you can be a little more aggressive. You can dribble into space. In that case, we saw a through ball, R9, five-star weak foot again. Not going to have any issues. No second guessing. No hesitation. 2-1. Anyone's game. We always knew that two goals was never going to be necessarily be enough. But you, you don't want to be put yourself in a position where you have to do too much work. We've seen that happen multiple times today where the comeback just didn't seem feasible. Well, it's the first grand final for both of these competitors. And that's always going to add extra pressure and extra nerves. First EMLS Grand Final, should I add. Lamps has been there in North American competition. I'm sure Rex Verde has found his way up there as well. Here's R9 for Lamps. Managing to get past the first. Can't quite do enough to get past the second, but I like the thought process. Just, unfortunately, a couple of centimetres off with the pass. And I hope to see more of these lofted balls going forward where they're kind of hitting one of the center mids or even one of the attackers that is drifting a little behind. I just think it's something that we didn't see utilized and it's an adjustment, it's a pivot for X Verde and it plays a big benefit for his build-up. And he will be building up right now. He's held possession for a little while. The fan of fires went into a back plate. No one able to receive the ball. No one making a dangerous run enough that Ex Verde considers playing that ball. But here's R9, still on side. Maybe the pass can come through to generate some sort of shot. Ex Verde, who usually shoots from quite some distance and any sort of opportunity, is being a little bit more patient at this time. Maybe feels like he has to try and work the ball into the box a little bit more. Neymar with the heel to heel, but the pass can't beat Lawrence. It's great defending again from Lamps, really waiting on it. Even after the heel to heel, he didn't bite. Uh, and again, that's part of the offense versus defensive challenge is what can you bait, what mistakes can you force? That one goes out for a goal kick. And we've got just seven minutes left in the first half of this second leg. Lamps still with the lead. And still, every time he gets possession, you do feel like danger is looming. It's Pasuelo, a lot of space, and Mbappe. Can't get past that first defender. And now Ex Verde can look to launch a counter-attack. There's a lot of white shirts flooding forward here. Mbappe making the run just to the right of the centre-backs. Will receive the ball, heads it down. An interesting decision. Maybe he could have just brought it down with his chest.
Okay. As well. Okay. okay. We'll, uh, we'll like leave that right. though for right. now. We'll All leave right. that right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll leave that. We'll leave that. We'll leave that. We'll leave that. So wait, we're going to go to you last. That was uncalled for. I did have to do that. I did. I'm on an island all by that. myself over here, big guy. All by myself. I had to let everybody know that's what's going down. All right. Dan Gaskin, you can go first this time. <laughs> um, you know what? You look thrilled, against- by the way. Ex Verde every single time, and I've gone against Lamps every single time, so this one's really <laughs> tough for me. <laughs> with a performance like I've just seen from Lamps, I have to go with Lamps and Minnesota here. Even though my brain's like, go for Ex Verde, that's the that's the off pick here. Has to be Lamps, surely. Okay, Susanna. <sighs> God, this is this is this has been a terrible day for me all around. The U.S. You've been so bad. Loses. You've been so bad. I am I got a big goose egg up there for. I th- I mean, it's just awful. It's just. I can awful. catch Susanna. My... I can catch you to Susanna. You, I know. You know. I'm literally That's looking insane. at these records right now, and That's that is insane. how bad it has got. Like I was looking at Mike yesterday, being like, "Whoa, like that's bad." Now I am in the same category. Oh, thanks, Susanna. But now you're right with me. I was. Yeah, come on I down. Was. I was. Welcome. Okay. No, we're gonna we're gonna turn it around right here, um, and it's gonna be lamps that does it for mm. me because. Like Dan said, based on that performance that we just watched, um, man, boy, he's on fire. Yeah. All right, I'm I'm gonna go with Lamps as well. I had a feeling this guy would step up this tournament, uh, especially after taking down Gold Machine. So we'll go three and zero there. Look, 73% of the chat saying Lamps right now as well. Mike, over to you, sir. What are you doing, dude? No (laughs) pressure, young goat. Mike Uh, Mike doesn't like Michael, by the way. Yeah, Michael doesn't. I just think he's got. Oh, you, well, well, sorry, uh, we're gonna call him Michael. Cut then. You off. Go for it. Yeah, oh, I'll be Michael okay. if you like. Whatever you want, Zway. What, what, what makes you happy? <laughs> we can go back to Dirty Mike for you too. All right. Oh, man, so Dirty Michael know. is going Young Goat. <laughs> they, they, they don't. Know. Young Goat. They know. Lamps. One word. Balance. I think that he just he's got too much. He's got too much uh, on the defensive end, and then of course being on the offensive side as well. All right, Zway. Much like Canada in World Cup qualifying, you are perfect so far today. What oh, do you have in terms of a prediction? All right, so I'm going to go against the grain here. Um, okay. While Lance's second match was obviously incredible, and he's got the momentum and all that, I was very impressed by X Verity's ability to answer Dulce's goals time after time in that first uh, in that first leg. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to say and be the only person here um, that's going to vote X Verde. So I don't know. I'm two and zero. I don't know. Track record there speaks for itself. So let's see. <laughs> Mm. Amazing. Not mm. just a prediction, some analysis behind it as well. Hey, we appreciate you hanging like out it. here with us, Zway. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, and of course... It's been a pleasure. Yes, Mike, I love yes, you. It has. Michael, and of I course, love you. We... I love Michael? You <laughs> yeah, Michael, 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 Michael. <laughs> Are we going to do a handshake after this? I feel like we have to like handshake and hug that out. You know? I hope yeah, to see you something. soon. That's all I'm going to say. Don't make me come down to Miami. I'll visit you. Yeah, come down. You're yeah. always welcome. That invite didn't seem to extend. You're, you're part of like a right, right the match. The rest of you <laughs> Send us your best comments in the chat, and we will feature them in the match. It is time for the League Series 2 final. Leg one, <laughs> getting set to go. Dan and Michael, take it away. Oh. Final time then between Austin SC and Minnesota. X Verde versus Lamps. Seventh versus eighth seed. This is not what anyone would have predicted as a grand final. I don't care how good your predictions are. No one would have called this. And mainly because of that man on your screen, X Verde. He has gone against the grain every single time. He has been the underdog, but he has got the job done. Can he go that one step further? Can he be a champion of EMLS League Series 2? Or are we going to see Lamps in his rookie season do what Gold Machine did also in Series 1 and lift a trophy in your first ever season in EMLS? Mike LaBelle, how are you seeing this one? Well, I feel a little guilty first off because I've gone against X Verde, similar to you, and I just didn't expect some of the results and his performances. I feel like I owe him an apology at this point. Making to the final, being able to battle back, having a lot of answers and rebuttals against Dulsta, being very dominant against Alan Avi. Alan Avi was never in that matchup, never in that game. It wasn't even competitive. And now heading into the final, all the talk and all the hype has been around Lamps because when he's played at his best, it's been so impressive. But Mike Tyson had a saying, and he said, Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. So if X Verde is able to maybe do some of the punching, maybe Lamp's plan doesn't go to plan. 
uh, because we haven't seen this matchup since they matched up a long time ago, sort of, a few days ago. Not a long time ago. And it was a big spread there, but this is a different X Verde. He's not the same guy. A different X Verde, and we need to see the X Verde that we have seen consistently throughout this weekend, not the X Verde that lost 7 0 to Lamps in qualifiers. X Verde is going to be kicking from left to right, whereas Lamps is going to be kicking from right to left. Of course, Austin versus Minnesota in this grand final of EMLS League Series 2. And X Verde looking to try and start things hot here, but is instantly denied by Lamps, and the counter attack is on. And Bapu is making a Bursting run down the right-hand side, but the offside trap sprung. Stops him in his tracks, but now R9 instead will take the baton. Out wide to Mbappe. Lamps looking to try and get an early goal, really to settle the pressure, but it's really doing very well to read everything he's doing. Still early, but it's hard to predict based on any of the previous results from X Verde because, as we said, going up against the top eight, everyone that had qualified for League Series 2, he didn't have a win versus any of them. And after he went on to defeat Alan Avi, I said, Oh, I think anything might be possible here. Then he went on to beat Dulsta and he had to battle back in that game too. He had to face adversity, which we hadn't necess necessarily seen either. So he's given you a little bit of everything, and he still has that unusual approach, that high-octane offense that we're talking about. Shots will be attempted. It's a little more unpredictable because most competitors are trying to work it in. A lot of these players are always looking for that extra percentage, that extra ball, but just as we saw then, X Verde, when he sees any sort of opportunity to pull that trigger, you better believe that shot is going to be at least taken. And sometimes it'll be from distance, sometimes it'll be from close. It's about where it goes afterwards. Where's that bubble? Where's that rebound? Here's R9. Nice little roulette to try and get past Duncan. Doesn't work out. And it means now X Verde can look to launch a counter attack of his own. It's been end to end at the moment. There's a lot of space on that left hand side for R9. Hasn't found him just yet, though. Instead, we'll just hold on to the ball a little bit and reassess his options. A little bit of a feel out thus far. We haven't had that big breakthrough, that major move. Nothing has technically happened just yet. Trying to get that commentator curse, Dan. You know how I Almost. do. You've done it so many times. It's I just, just start talking at the right moment, right? I'm setting it up. I'm, tell I'm telling the story. Either that or the wrong moment. It depends which way you want to look at it, really. But certainly, Fair. if you are watching on and you want a goal to happen, get Mike LaBelle to start talking about how there's not been any goals yet. Because every time he seems to focus on that, someone will strike through. And that Ooh. is... A heck of a ball over the top to R9. Takes it down and needs a little bit of support. Does have support from Pato, but has to go all the way back to Duncan. And certainly, Lamps has been pressuring X Verde so much to the point that X Verde doesn't feel like he can play that extra pass and go forward. But he's more than happy to play the possession game right now. Have a little bit of an assessment of what Lamps is trying to do defensively. That's a nice ball to Mbappe. R9, one more to Pesuelo. Oh. Back to R9. Oh. Does he get the shot away? Oh. Yes, he does. But unfortunately, it gets pulled back. I'd love to see that on a replay. Why? That seemed just... Ah, the tiki-taka, the pass and move. I don't know about that offsides. Uh, it must have been a half step. It had to be very close. Uh, because that build-up was at a premium. Everything was there. Well, officials deciding it's not going to be fair play. It's going to be offside. And yeah, a replay would be good just to get a second look at it at some point. But for now, Lamps will be thankful that he's not a goal behind and instead will launch an attack of his own here. Neymar in the middle. Having to try and get past Fofana, which is never an easy task. And then Nathan comes steaming in. A defensive brick wall that has been very apparent throughout this entire weekend. And Ace Verde now has possession once more. Seen a much different speed of the game as well. Uh, in some of the previous matchups, especially for Ex Verde, they've been a lot higher pressure, a lot faster moving, just higher tempo in general. And in this match, he's had to have a lot more build-up in order to get himself into some of those attacking uh, places on the, on the pitch. And that might be more credit, again, to Lamps being just so solid defensively that he's causing X Verde to have to take his time with the build-up before kind of speeding it up as you get into the final third. Suelo will find that pass to Neymar. Croquetta inside. 
Not really the skill move it once was in its prime. It is funny how these skill moves go from being unstoppable in previous iterations of FIFA to then pretty dismal in later iterations. They just get nerfed into the ground. But usually the newer skill moves that are introduced into the game and the newer mechanics, they're the ones that are very powerful. Here's Mbappe now. Does have support on the right-hand side, but opts to go back to Fofana. Does have a free kick if he wants to take it, but instead will just hold on to possession with Pozuelo. Arnon Mbappe trying to make those runs, trying to cut apart those defenders. It's messy at the back at the moment, but R9 still somehow has it, and eventually Exverdi wrestles it off him. And out of all the games that we've seen today, this is the first one that's been real cagey from the beginning. It hasn't been nearly as fluid, and it just might be because it's the final. No one wants to be the first guy to make a mistake. The buildup is much slower for both competitors. It just seems to be a little more on the precise end with some of the, the, the structure. Uh, specifically with the build-up play, not necessarily when you get into that final third, but the build-up play is, is very risk-adverse. Uh, 45 minutes gone. No goals and not really any shots to scream or shout about. Ex Verde was able to pull the trigger a couple of times, but Lamps yet to actually have a shot. And I think that says a lot about the performance from Ex Verde, just keeping Lamps at bay and perhaps learned a lot previously from their encounter. Here's our nine that it touched Mbappe. Is that why? It, Is that that's what, why it was offside? I was trying to figure out the scenario. Does it touch him? It can, must can I get because... another replay? Run that back slower. What's going on? Does it even touch him though? Man, oh, it just that's tough. clips the boot. That's tough. I was trying to figure it out because I swear the way he opened up the space, it was good to go. Wow. Ex Verde. A hair away from being able to be 1 0 up. Lamps. Maybe he could go 1-0 up, Donnarumma. Again, diving to his left with a strong hand, forcing it out for a corner. Lamps exploding into this second half now. Maybe not so happy with the pace of the game in the first 4-5. Play his own game. Play the same game we've seen Lamps be able to dominate all weekend long. Instead, though, Exverde wins possession back, and now he instead will look to try and play one over the top, perhaps. Several players making that run. A lot of room on the left-hand side, which he can ex use and expose if he wants to. Here's Lawrence. Can he get the cross to the back post? Yes, he can, but the denied header means that Lamps just about holds on. And you're seeing both competitors being tested with some of the offense, too. They're trying to implement different oh. ways to score goals. Oh, oh. wow. <gasps> wow. Oh, my goodness. Wow, wow. <sighs> Sign it, seal it, send it. What a goal that is. It. Jeez. Look at the footwork. You see the slight ball roll across the body, the first touches, the secondary touches. Just all in one motion. Really slick. Composed. And we have our opening goal, 55th minute. So Ex Verde, who could have been 1 0 up if it weren't for Mbappe, just ever so slightly touching the ball and making it count as an offside. I've never seen that happen, by the way. That is one of those freak moments that Ex Verde will just be wondering how on earth Mbappe got in the way. But Lamps recovers, holds on, and then scores a goal like that to gain the lead. But Ex Verde, who constantly showed a response against Ulster earlier on today in the semi-finals, has to show that same resilience here. Neymar tries to get a Ooh. shot away. Nathan denies. For Fana. For Fana on for Fana action. Now will allow Lamps to maybe play a through ball here to Mbappe, making the run being tracked by Ex Verde. But Mbappe still picks it up, still holds on to it as well. What good foot movement this is. And eventually is just fizzled out by Ex Verde. Now he instead could try and do something. There's the over the top through ball. Can Mbappe get ahead to it? So close. But Donnarumma, he was fouled anyway. Not quite. And what you're seeing right now is both competitors are trying to isolate those matchups where you have Mbappe or you, you got R9. Can you create some sort of island? 
It just puts them in an advantageous role, especially for offensive players with this much, not only technical skill set, but just pure pace and power and, and this dynamic capability. We, we saw that first goal from Lamps. It was kind of created from nothing. It was a, a deep driven pass, a couple good touches, a beautiful skill, some slick footwork, but it was just a moment from R9 and he was able to convert. And that's been the separation. I have to give credit for Lamps to be able to be defending against Ex Verde so successfully, who has been very unpredictable so far in this tournament, and maybe can find a little bit of that magic here. Persuelo gets hold of it. Donnarumma saves. Rebound goes to Pato. Ball still alive here for Ex Verde. Can he get a ball into the middle? Yes, he can. Mbappe, though, can't get hold of it. Fafana's there to defend. And Lamps holds on to this goal lead. Oof. You can't now. tell me Fofana hasn't been everywhere, Dan. He is covering he, he all of the space in the midfield. Yeah, he, I mean, ever since his Player of the Month item came out, I thought that was a must-do, and that was a long time ago. I still think that item actually would match up pretty well, even at this stage. And then a better one arrived. Here's R9. Gets hassled and jockeyed. Oh, can't get that ball to Mbappe. Fourteen minutes left in this one, and there's a well raked through ball, and the finish is divine. You're not stopping that one. Mbappe, have a swing. Two nil. And it starts from a big mistake in the middle of the pitch. They always tell you don't turn over possession there. Easy transition. You can split the center backs. Everybody's out of position. We might take a second glimpse of it. Again, the play's broken up. And when we're looking at competitive FIFA, a big decider uh, or a big separator is often the mistakes that are made. You see Fafana again broke up that play. Straight line through ball. Both defenders out of position. Mbappe another day in the office. And when you have additional time like that, you can also look up. You saw the goalkeeper move early. It was a relatively elementary finish uh, for, for someone as gifted and talented as Lamps and maybe someone that's just in such good form. So this should be a big shifting point here to see if Ex Verde can get something by the end of the match because it just tells you I'm still focused, I'm still dialed in. The last 10 minutes will be really important to having a, a different feel or different momentum going into leg number two. And there is going to be another 90 minutes to remember. It's two legs here in this grand final. So even though just the 12 minutes left in leg number one still another leg to arrive and it has always been quite often a tale of two legs in a lot of these games and Lamps doesn't have the 4-0 cushion that we've seen him hold in every single game on broadcast so far quarterfinals versus goal machine he goes into leg number two 4-0 up semi-finals versus Paolo Neto he goes in 4-0 up he's only 2-0 up at the moment I think he'll still be very happy to at least be holding the lead. Exverde beats the offside trap. Mbappe. Plenty of space to run into. But he's being hassled and jockeyed by the fullback. And he's just looking to try and make that pass into the middle. Does find it, but it's Pozuelo on the edge. Sanchez, though, is going to be a nuisance and steal the ball away. And you can see Lamps here sitting a little deeper and just looking for some of these outlets. Really taking his time with the build-up. Oh, what a tackle that is, by the way. That could have very easily gone wayward. Would have allowed Lamps a chance to maybe get a third. Instead, Ex Verde has possession. I give it away though. Duncan in the right place at the right time. Oh, he was open. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Lamps holds the final attack here. He's He's been pretty dominant, very controlled the whole way through. Uh, and it makes the most sense to close it out with some game management and make sure you get the last opportunity. Lamps will have that last chance, you'd imagine, unless he gives the ball away, but he shouldn't. Sanchez fires, will it? Vinicius Jr. Needs some assistance Ooh. in the middle. Won't get it, but he will get a 2-0 advantage going into leg number two. So if we take into account the qualifiers as well, that's 180 minutes of Lamps not conceding against Ex Verde. I know 90 minutes of those, of course, were in a leg one format, a little bit different, but 7-0 in the qualifiers, 2-0 now in leg number one of this grand final. Everything is pointing towards Lamps and Minnesota being the champions here of EMLS League Series 2. Faisal, I mean, Austin FC and Ex Verde, they looked good all tournament long. Is Lamps that one step too far here? 
So far, it looks that way, guys. And again, like I'd argue he should be up maybe a little bit more. This was a kind of slow game for him. It took him until the 54th minute to finally get his first goal. And if going to count first leg scores for him, he's up 10. He's got 10 first leg goals. Trying to make sure he does that work early and sets himself up for a good position in leg two. But Mike, when you look at some of those goals, and we'll get to the highlights right now, just things of beauty. They really were. And he's got the total package. And just, he took some key moments here, was able to convert on them. And I was going to say it was a very professional performance. I feel that Lamps is licensed to FIFA 22. There's this isolation again. Oh, the turn oh. one, not quite done. Ball oh, roll, get out of my man. house. The extra oh. touch, it, it's oh. just smooth. It's silky. It's composed. There's a certain stickiness to it even when he's building up, and that's meant in a complimentary way. And as I've been saying, Fofana's been the guy to watch, the big surprise player. That is straight line, straight edged, split the center backs. It's how they teach you, and Mbappe, just another day in the office. So good. So, so good, Mike. And uh, he, set, he sets himself up now, right? So how do you close out a game? It's a final. He's a young player. The nerves, I imagine, he doesn't look nervous. It doesn't look phased. How do you keep your mentals in check and close this one out? In my opinion, he has to change nothing. He's been sitting deep. He's been looking for yeah. these big outlets. He's had a lot of yeah. possession play. This is a fantastic tactic to see out a game. And in this case, he now has two goals to help him a little bit. He doesn't have to make a shift. Uh, and he's done such a good job in these first legs. I expect, of course, Ex Verde to come out and be much more aggressive. But if Lance yeah. can keep hitting these counterattacks and finding the space, what's it going to change? Be efficient, knock out the game, close it out. I imagine uh, Ex Verde is going to look at the replay of that first offside goal that was given and zoom in to see that touch because I don't know, man. I didn't see it, but hey, the game is the game for a reason. Okay, I want to remind everybody we've got a contest. If you're watching on Twitch, you can win a custom MLS jersey, MLS store gift cards, and 120,000 FIFA points. All of that up for grabs. To be eligible, make sure you're signed in and link your account with the Sport Buff extension. You got to link your account to qualify. That'll be the last time I tell you. Now, to link your account, and I'll tell you this one more time, Click the leaderboard, click the settings, and link your Twitch account. At the end of this match, the top 10 on the leaderboard will receive a whisper on Twitch to claim their prize. Restrictions do apply. You got to be 18 or older and be a resident of either the U.S. or Canada, excluding Quebec. You can see the panel below for contest rules. Also, make sure you do not have block whispers from strangers turned on in your Twitch <laughs> settings. If you do, we can't whisper to you and give you said prize. Simple as that. Okay. Dan and Mike, hopefully our last virtual match of EMLS this season. Leg two, League Series two title on the line. Send us your best comments in the chat. We'll try to feature them if we can. It's time to get to our finale, Dan. Yeah, and everything is pointing towards Lamps and Minnesota, but Ex Verde and Austin FC will look to try and change that. But something just seems to be off for Ex Verde against Lamps. It was 7-0 in the qualifiers in favor of Lamps. It's 2-0 now after the first leg. It just seems like defensively, Lamps has the number of Ex Verde here. And Ex Verde needs to find a way to break through. And I don't know what that is, Mike. I don't know whether that's a tactical change, whether that's just a change of thought process. He came so close, of course, with the R9 attempt that was eventually called offside. So at least there's that for him to bank on and him to at least think back to as we do kick off the second leg of the grand final of EMLS Series 2. I think it's it's easier to be in our position, but it's kind of relatively straightforward for me in terms of the shift. Uh, what we didn't see from Ex Verde that he had in his previous matchups is he always had this organized havoc. A lot of pressure on the defensive end. He forced mistakes. He was very aggressive going forward. And in the, the previous leg, he was building up. He had a lot slower gameplay, which I feel played into the hand of Lamps. It was an advantage for Lamps to play at that speed, to be a little more structured. We always talk about Ex Verde and how he's got this unpredictable, high quantity, high octane offense. We didn't see that, and it wasn't just the defense from Lamps. It was really the speed and also the risk that was taken, or in this case, lacked there uh, of on the defensive end. We didn't see the same pressure. Neymar for Lamps. You feel an early goal here would just do wonders for the confidence and the reassurance that Lamps will be looking for. And for Ex Verde, he's got to try and deny that. He's got to try and somehow deny this aggression and pace that Lamps is offering, but then also at the other end do some damage, and Mbappe is going to be offside. 
this time quite rightfully so. 10 minutes in, 80 minutes remaining, and that time does dwindle away very quickly if you are down by goals. This is going to be yet another offside. And even though that's offside, that's a little bit closer to what we've been expecting from Ex Verde. The way that he bursts through, he challenges a lot of 50-50s, and I, I just don't feel as if we saw that form of expression. Maybe because it's in a final, maybe there's some nerves. Maybe we just give a lot of credit to Lamps and, and what he was able to do on the defensive end. Uh, but he wasn't putting himself in those types of situations, and definitely not frequently enough. Alex well, Verde rescues the ball and wrestles back possession here. Nathan is... Unfortunately, too big to get around. Sometimes he's like a roundabout. You have to indicate left and try and get round him. I realize roundabouts don't exist in America, so that reference might That's get lost. That's not true. Not common, but they definitely exist. Oh, they exist? Okay, well, mm -hmm. I'm proven wrong. And I'm glad that you've adapted to the correct highway code. Pazuelo into Neymar and Donnarumma. Oh. Again, showing how important he's been between the sticks. Another dip, I wouldn't, so mind, I wouldn't mind seeing that one again as well. I think there was slight goalkeeper movement, but it was definitely very slight. But it positioned Donnarumma in a favorable place for that, that shot attempt, of course, and it makes a difference. And at this level, we're always trying to find those small margins. Between two players who have been so impressive all weekend long, sometimes it will be those fine margins that make the difference. I mean, you look at the offside goal, or the, the non-offside goal, should I say, in the first leg, how close Ex Verde was to taking the lead in this tie and how different it could have been if that had come to fruition. Neymar finds R9 and oh, should be able to ball. strike it with his left, and he will do. And that's exactly what Ex Verde needed here. Austin FC grab one back. And you see the difference. You can feel the difference. Do you see the, have you noticed the lofted passes now? He's using that as a way to start his attacks. He's getting these centrally lofted passes. They kick him down, and then you can go forward. Then you can be a little more aggressive. You can dribble into space. In that case, we saw a through ball, R9, five-star weak foot again. Not going to have any issues. No second guessing. No hesitation. 2-1, anyone's game. We always knew that two goals was never going to be necessarily be enough, but you, you don't want to be put yourself in a position where you have to do too much work. We've seen that happen multiple times today where the comeback just didn't seem feasible. It's the first grand final for both of these competitors, and that's always going to add extra pressure and extra nerves. First EMLS grand final, should I add. Lamps has been there in North American competition. I'm sure Rex Verde has found his way up there as well. Here's R9 for Lamps. Managing to get past the first. Can't quite do enough to get past the second, but I like the thought process. Just, unfortunately, a couple of centimetres off with the pass. And I hope to see more of these lofted balls going forward where they're kind of hitting one of the center mids or even one of the attackers that is drifting a little behind. I just think it's something that we didn't see utilized and it's an adjustment, it's a pivot for Ex Verde and it plays a big benefit for his build-up. And he will be building up right now. He's held possession for a little while. Fafana fires one into a back bait. No one able to receive the ball. No one making a dangerous run enough that Ex Verde considers playing that ball. But here's R9, still on side. Maybe the pass can come through to generate some sort of shot. Ex Verde, who usually shoots from quite some distance and any sort of opportunity, is being a little bit more patient at this time. Maybe feels like he has to try and work the ball into the box a little bit more. Neymar with the heel to heel, but the pass can't beat Lawrence. It's great defending again from Lamps, really waiting on it. Even after the heel to heel, he didn't bite. Uh, and again, that's part of the offense versus defensive challenge is what can you bait, what mistakes can you force? That one goes out for a goal kick. And we've got just seven minutes left in the first half of this second leg. Lamps still with the lead. And still every time he gets possession, you do feel like danger is looming. It's Pasuelo, a lot of space, and Mbappe. Can't get past that first defender. And now Ex Verde can look to launch a counter attack. There's a lot of white shirts flooding forward here. Mbappe making the run just to the right of the centre backs. Will receive the ball, heads it down. An interesting decision. Maybe could have just brought it down with his chest.
two goal lead. And now you're going to see adjustments from X Verde because he has to go for it. There's no reason really to to waste a lot of time or, or let the clock go. You need more more offense and you need more offense now. That first touch with Ronaldo just really opens up the pitch, takes the center lane, and then it allows, of course, Neymar to have the overlapping run. Same with Mbappe, but you just make things a little less predictable. Uh, and it all started from being able to cut inside. Still that, that simplicity. And then the right decision, of course, waits for the goalkeeper movement and extends the lead. Keeper should be able to get to this one, but another dangerous ball that Lamps probably would have been a little bit worried when it actually started to come through. But Alex Verde not able to get on the end of it. And Lamps, now with this two-goal lead, if he can make that a three-goal lead, that might be enough to call himself a champion. Kylian Mbappe out towards Pato. If anyone's there to feed the back ball into the middle, then a goal could be on the horizon here. But having to retreat and instead recycle play, it's sensible, it's slower, it's patient. No risks being taken at the moment from Lamps and might oh. be rewarded with it here. Mbappe manages to fire and Keeper just about gets down and gets a touch to it. What a save. Uh, just, just great reads across the board uh, from Lamps. Also, the, the big recycle I think is smart. You have a two-goal advantage. Oh. It's not necessarily about killing off the game, but you're letting your opponent know that you will play the game management. And it is part of competitive FIFA, whether you love it or you hate it, but possession play and putting your opposition under pressure, it's, it's going to go hand in hand with success stories. You've got to be able to close out matches. Well, naturally, you can see the players pressing more for X Verde, but that's going to naturally leave a little bit more gaps at the back. Pato gets into the middle and Mbappe will put a fourth in for Lamps, the second of the game, but it's a three goal advantage. And with 30 minutes to play, perhaps we're starting to take a look at our champions of the MLS Series 2. Minnesota and Lamps are on the brink of victory. And that's pitcher perfect. He just enticed them. Pulled it back, stretched the pitch, gets a little bit of the additional pressure that you need. The patience or the focus is lost, gets in behind. It's just well done across the board. You have that penetrating through ball and then the extra pass. Uh -oh. Chance here. This could be the game. Back post is free as well. Neymar plays it to the back post. And of all people, Pato, the newest introduction, the MLS player, will grab the fifth that surely, surely seals the victory here for Lamps. Congratulations, Lamps, rookie season. He was a backup last year, didn't get a chance to partake in the league, didn't play any league matches. This year, he's a champion comes in, makes a difference, impactful. I know that he was unhappy losing uh, to, 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 to Goal Machine, or losing to Palonetta, excuse me, in League Series 1. This is the ultimate response. Beats Palonetta, revenge matchup, not an issue. 5-1 up now, 65th minute. If you want, you can play a lot more free. You can be aggressive, you can hold the ball. There's not enough time really for your opponent to make the comeback. Uh, but it just shows you the, the, the future of players that are coming into the scene. 18 years young. They call him the young goat. We talk about Palonetto a lot as well. 19 years old. A lot of people forget because he's been in the competitive scene for a few years already. Came in at 16 making noise. Oh, we've seen so many young players come through the ranks and demonstrate what they're made of at major events. If Arnold can get a goal here, there is still just about time for X Verde. I don't want to rule him out just yet. He's throwing every skill move in the books, but reluctant to shoot which isn't like X Verde and Lamps stealing it away and with that probably stealing away any chance of X Verde getting back into this game it has been such a masterclass from Lamps all weekend long every single time I think I've seen the best of him he just one-ups himself every single test he's had an answer to Mbappe still holding on to the ball Neymar there to support back post is free once more for Pato but instead he's just going to hold it here Plays it inside to Pozuelo, and oh, it's magic, oh. but I think it's offside. Slightly so offside. close to being perfect. Yeah. And again, another one-word description for Lamps. He's just complete, thorough. There's nothing that he, he's been missing for the broadcast games. Uh, we talk about it time and time again, but the defense is right. The speed of the game, the tempo, the cadence, the composure is all right. The skill moves is there just to give you that added bit of creativity. Being able to switch between aggressive or defensive or passive styles on the fly, multiple formations, total package. It just seems like Lamps has the number of X Verde 
And it could be a sixth goal as well for Mbappe. Goes for the chip. Oh, it's oh, beautiful. Come on. Lamb smiling and he's putting on a show for us. A sixth goal here on aggregate. Remember, seven goals in the qualifiers. That's now 13 to the one from Ex Verde. It's magical. Lamps has been unstoppable. Marvelous. Truly, some of the goals he's given us, and I, I keep saying this, but I feel that the buildup and just the reading of the game, I mean, 2020 vision, this guy definitely already had LASIK. Pato should be able to Again. stop that one from going out. Look and at he the will. pick out. Look at the pick out. Great ball, but unfortunately, Pato gets taken out. But at least he's going to be able to hold on to the ball for now. As I say that, the pressure's still coming in from Lamps. Lamps wants more. Lamps is out for blood here. Exverde at this point pretty much knows that there is no getting back into this game. It's about saving face. Even a goal here, but he can't score that. Ronaldo on the volley sends it wide. It was offside anyway, so it's not going to matter. But Lamps in his rookie season, just as Goal Machine did two weeks ago, is going to be a champion. And I think that is going to do wonders for his confidence and his trajectory going forward as a FIFA professional. He is going to be a scary factor at the EMLS Cup. Wouldn't you agree, Mike Lavelle? There's no denying that. Uh, there's a certain maturity to his gameplay. And he's already been a North American champion last year as well, even though he wasn't uh, part of EMLS. He wasn't competing in EMLS. There's just a sophistication to, to how he's cultivating his attacks. Uh, it, it might sound funny with some of the descriptive words, but there's a certain amount of culture that he has for the game because he gives you a little bit of everything. Two minutes of added on time in this grand final. And what a weekend it's been, by the way. It's such a pleasure to be able to call the action. I love EMLS. Oh, he's on. And maybe he's on side. we can sign it off with a goal from Alexander Pato once more around the keeper. Oh. One more for luck. And oh, there's a defender on the line. Exverde laughs. Lamps has a smile. And Lamps breathes a sigh of relief because Minnesota and Lamps are your EMLS League Series 2 champions in what was an emphatic victory against Austin. Wow. I, I mean, insert a superlative here on how you want to describe that. I keep giving compliments because he's earned them. Uh, there's just no flaws in the game. We said it early on, or I, I made the statement after the first leg versus goal machine. I, I said if he could remake and replicate this, there's no one touching him. Not only would he be, and or he is, top tier in North America. This is top tier in Europe type of material with what he's giving uh, the, the, or showcasing uh, on the virtual pitch. It's just impressive. Well, of course, I mean. At the EMLS Cup, there's three spots to get into playoffs and be able to compete against the rest of the world and maybe even get to that E-World Cup. And with performances like that, Lamps is definitely capable of doing so. Faisal, Minnesota and Lamps, they get it done. They are League Series 2 champions here in EMLS. And it was, you know, an unstoppable performance after all. It really was, man. Goal after goal after goal. And you mentioned what the buildup was in qualifying. He almost replicated that here today, but he is your champion. He had to take down a champion to start the weekend and now sees himself at the top of the chart. Lamps, congratulations. And you mentioned, hey, these guys could play in your... Man, we are represented so far in the MLS by two world-class champions. League Series 1 champ, Gold Machine. League Series 2 champ, Lamps. And it's going to make for a fun EMLS Cup. I cannot wait for Austin in March because the talent, we know it could have gone so many different ways. If one person scores a different goal in qualifying, who knows what this table would have been, but we were blessed to see what we saw this weekend. And again, a big congratulations to Lambs. And Mike, let's take a look at some of the highlights. You sang the praises of Lambs, deservedly so. It's not just a simple style of play, you know. He was ready to go. We'll start, of course, with the X Verde goal here but want to focus on what Lamps was able to do after that again, because he, he, at this moment in time, you know, when the pressures are there and the palms are getting a little bit sweaty, he said, nah, I'm going to end this right here, right now. Look at this. We well, just outlast him, Faisal, in, in many regards. Uh, you, you see the beautiful overlapping Let's run, go. sets the tone going into the second half. It's a relatively simple goal, makes the key pass, waits for the goalkeeper movement. I love this play. If we had the full buildup across the board, the way that he kind of just pulls players out of position and waits for his moment, resurfaces, recycles, the guy cares. 
uh, about the ecosystem. You, He's making you everything happen his here. You defensive game too, Mike. And this one came off a defensive yeah, and stop. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing that's lacking. That like, I, I mean that. I'm being very serious and sincere. Uh, the reason that I said first time I saw him play on broadcast versus Gold Machine that this guy, if he stays like this, is gonna win it. It, there's too much. There's not anything that's missing. Look at the time finish there. When you have the razzle and you have the dazzle, but then you have every <laughs> intangible, right? You have every detail. You have all the basics mastered, and then you can build from those, and then you're mature with the way that you play. Then you can adjust. You can pivot. And also his patience. If you really think about it, nothing's been rushed. Always controlled. Always the tempo setter. Yeah. 18 years 18. old. Where's 18. the goat that's emote? A, that's what I was going to say, man. This thing. That's what I was going to say, Mike. He's 18 I'm years old. I'm not going to overstep over here. GG's. For all he's there accomplished. There it is. Boom. In a lot of ways, guys. He is just getting started as he's well. He's ready. He is, however. He's ready. The brightest star. Lambs. EMLS League Series 2 champion. Let's over, head over to Susanna for our victory moment presented by Coca-Cola. All right, Lamps, this is your rookie EMLS season, and what a statement you just made. You are the League Series 2 champion. How does it feel? I mean, it feels great. Um, obviously, a couple weeks ago, I fell short. I don't think I performed like how I could have, and obviously, I proved today that I could have done better last time than I did do better this time. All right, let's talk about the guys that you took down in League Series 2 because these are some heavy hitters. We had Gold Machine, who is the League Series 1 champion. Paolo Neto, who has been so good in 2022 and uh, scoring a ton of goals. And then we've got X Verde, who also is just an offensive powerhouse. How did you do it? Uh, I mean, I took it one game at a time. I, From what I've done this year, I already know I can beat anyone. Um, I feel like the standings going into this league series were also very close. Anyone could have been anywhere, so I didn't really pay attention much to that. Just took it one game at a time and managed to win every time. Managed to win every time. Des decisively <laughs> as well. Decisively. Yeah. Um, all right. EMLS Cup just over a month away in Austin at mm -hmm. South by Southwest. Why are you going to be the one to beat in Austin? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm the champ going into Austin. I'm the one on the best form. So if there's anyone to be scared of, it would, it would have to be me. <laughs> I love it. Love the confidence. Um, I know you said you're a little bit under the weather, but I, I hope you get a chance to, to yeah. celebrate. This is like your, your Jordan flu game, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess. An incredible a performance. Congratulations, Lamp. Thank you. All right, Faisal, back to you. It's funny, you know, I, I was messaging with him on Friday. He messaged me saying, ah, man, the weather's going to be bad. I don't know what my connection's going to be like. And look at this, man. Powered all the way through. The Lamp ultimately outdoing the snow and uh, outdoing everybody in EMLS League Series 2 to get to where he is. And Dan, it wasn't a walk in the park. That side of the bracket was so tough, right? It was finalist and champion he had to take down, and he did just that. Oh, he was put through the gauntlet time and time again, but it was his first leg performances that really allowed him to sail through this bracket. 4-0 against Goal Machine, 4-0 against Paolo Neto. And then even though it was only the two goals in the grand final, that was enough to give him the platform, I think, to push himself on, give him that belief, and also take the pressure off his shoulders a little bit. In the grand final, if he had gone 1-0 down, very easy for an 18-year-old in their rookie season to suddenly start doubting themselves a little bit. And I'm not saying Lamps definitely would have, but there's certainly no. something that could have happened. But yeah. so impressed with that young man. Also, hats off to X Verde because yes. he proved us all wrong. I mean, well, most of us wrong, Faisal. I know you still went on his side initially, but he was the underdog. He was eighth seed. He got to the grand final and he deserves all the plaudits as well. Yeah, no, not, not about me right now. Not about me right now. It's about these players. And, and again, the, the amount of entertainment we were provided to this weekend to the tune of some great, great goals. So many throughout the course of the weekend. Let's look at the goal of the tournament and turn it over to our expert, Mike LaBelle, to help break this one down. And it's a beautiful pass. You see the through ball, you isolate that matchup, and then R9 does what he does. You got to give Lamps a lot of credit here. 
just some of the moving and, and, and grooving, the way that he switches and changes direction. You see the ball roll in there, just full control. And it just seems like this is icing on the cake. Add the sprinkles. Uh, I'll take a, a candle, light the candle, make a wish while I'm making wishes. Congratulations. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, I've given out everything you could ask for. I'll take you for pastries. Give me an address. I'll send you a delivery. The guy has been so impressive. And <laughs> every happened? single... I don't every know. Single, I don't know. What? What do you mean? What do you mean? You don't think he earned that? I'll get him with a pizza no, delivery. He, what do you need? He's he's, he's close by. He's not far please, off. Please. Okay? Please, for the last time this weekend, put your labellas of emotes in the chat because uh, I don't know, man. Throw it up, Mike. Throw Young up your goat, own Congratulations. Stick, we got the labellas and we got the goat. Good luck. He said he said it, he sent a message. Uh, I, I would not want to play him in Austin. He definitely sent a message. He is the guy to watch yeah. right now. Yeah. I... Um, yeah, that's the real deal. There's no second guessing in that. He's adjusted, he's ready, and he's young and hungry. And I'm feeding him, and apparently. Speak, speaking <laughs> of Austin, well, you're trying to at least. Uh, we still have one more event this season. It's going to be our biggest yet. South by Southwest in Austin, Texas on March 13th. If you haven't booked your travel, hey, it is time to do just that. Let's look ahead and preview what we are in store for. Four, okay, we've got the overall standings. Both qualifier rounds were tallied up. The top 11 move on automatically to the bracket. The top four are receiving first round buys. Mike LaBelle, take us through it. I'd love to. I'd be honored. So the big key, as Faisal was saying, that top 11, you're certified, you're in there, and anything can happen. We saw that today. The seventh and the eighth seed ended up in the finals. So the seeding is actually not that important but i will say this if you're in the one through four spot you get a buy round that's a percentage play i like it however that 12th spot is going to be wild you have a last chance qualifier there's one position and i mean we're talking the likes of gustavo you see lou georgia damu not even on the front sheet here he's not even there you can you imagine georgia damu not qualifying for emls cup savvy panda what about gastella that's always <laughs> Susanna's favorite. And Gasell has always made the final broadcast. There's never been a time that he wasn't there. So there's only one position. So that's going to be a battle. And that's going to be happening live. You don't want to miss any of this. Be in house for it. Austin, South by Southwest. Take Let's a break go. from the music. Come see us. <laughs> these, these vibes, this atmosphere, this ambiance is going to be something special. Well, let's take a look at that bracket and the matchups that we'll see. Of course, everyone else has to compete in the last chance qualifier for that 12th seed because it's going to be crazy. The first round is a knockout round, and the four oh. seeds who await them are there. Look at this. Gold Machine. Oh my, oh uh, if you make goodness. it through Jock Center or Pabs, there's Gold Machine waiting. Paolo Neto and our last chance winner, you got Alexander. Like, th there's, oh, there's no slouch here. There's no easy matchup. I'm stunned. There's so much talent. We've seen what everybody's been able to do. Here's Paolo Neto. Makes a final tw twice. <laughs> and you might take somebody else. Lamps, a winner. Taking on Alan Avi or Kid Mamito. Both of whom were in the League Series 2 this weekend, Mike LaBelle. Ooh, so, a rematch. I don't even know a where rematch. you go. I don't even know where you go. We got a rematch already. Wow. Wow. I don't know where I would want to pick my starting point. Uh, none of them seem very rewarding, but that's what it's all about. I mean, we have 27 teams. You've got the best players across all of North America. Everybody's in the league. This is what we expect. The, the, the details are fine. The particulars are important. You heard me describe the cake. Don't don't let me keep going. We don't know oh, what no. direction no, I we're going to head in. I, I mean, it's around dinner time, all right? I'm already I starting to think about is, Italian it food is, pretty it heavy is, right now. Is. Okay. <laughs> Okay, as a reminder, uh, we I'll want you guys you to mark make your pizza <laughs> real quick. EMLS Sorry. Cup is on Sunday, March 13th at South by Southwest. That's the barbecue state in Austin, Texas. You don't want to mm. miss it. Mark your calendar. Until mark. then, though. Yeah, mark your, he's right. Mark your calendar. I'm excited. Until then. I'm excited. I'm you buzzing. Follow all the latest news and updates <laughs> by following at EMLS on Twitter and on Instagram. Yo, that does it for us. What a weekend for Susanna, Dan, and Mike. That was awesome. League Series 2 presented by Coca-Cola, of course. Thank you to everyone for watching. Congrats to Lamp for being crowned the second champion of the season. All four of us want to see you all in Austin, Texas in just over a month's time. We hope we do, and we hope you have a good night. Peace.